swearing at me. Oh, we'll be in every minute if you don't tell me where it is. There's a big pile of it over there, see. Oh, ta. You need dentures, you bits on your fault, eh? My customers, will you mean? They hardly leave enough room in the cup for the tea. I know I used to be like that, didn't I? Till I gave it up for Lent. Do you remember last year? Gave it up for Lent and I never went back to it. It's, it's all habit, I suppose, isn't it? Are you still meaning to go against your religion? For George? I am, love, yes. I'd rather not have to, but there it is. Well, will he still go to church, or...? Oh, yes, I still go to church, love. I just won't receive the sacraments, that's all. I said my prayers last night, and at the end I said, Lord, you know what I'm going to do, and you know the reasons for it, and I hope you'll understand and forgive me. I'm sure you will. Well, anyway, best be off. Yes, I Now, and how's Alf this morning? Oh, another year older and deeper in debt, you know how it is. <laughs> I'm back. Hi, girl. Hi. Alf, can I ask you a favour? Sorry, I. It's all right, love. Do you mind if I'm a few minutes late? Only there's something I want to see Ken about. Not that I didn't see him this morning, it's just something that's just come up. Yeah, get yourself off last night. Right. See you later. Hello. I think I'll have to try that with all women. Mind you, I don't think I'd get the same reaction somehow. Well, he's not as kind as me, you know. No, he's not. He doesn't lend folk his car, for one thing. No, I don't suppose he does. Uh, have you got any idea when Audrey's getting back, anyway? Your guess is as good as mine. I expected a bat last night till I got that phone call. Well, not that I'm desperate like, you know, I just wondered. Uh, 120, please. Uh, that's right, Tom. Right. Right. See? See ya. How much? Hang on a minute, George. You're an early bird again, aren't you? Well, if I set up now, I'll be back for dinner. Well, can we have a talk when you do? Well, well, look, George, I've got something new to say, and uh, well, I can't say it to you. Can you come round to my house for your dinner? Well, if I'm back, but... Well, you said you would be. That's why you're setting off now. Yeah, if I am, I will, yeah. All right, thanks. So have careful. Yeah. Hi, love. Hi. Kenny. No, he dropped me off and then went straight on to the printers. Ah. See, I'm that successful in getting us more ads. He's having to arrange for extra pages. Where we're going, we'll have a colour supplement by next week. Oh, well, I'll catch him later. Deirdre, there's nothing wrong, is there? No, no. It's, uh, it's just something I wanted to talk to him about. Listen, I'll tell you all about it tonight. I just wanted to tell him first. Shall I tell him you've called? Yeah, you can do. And tell him it's good news. Your premium bonds come up. Nope, better than that. Right, according to the good Captain Elder, today is the day when we put all his eggs in one basket. How do you mean? Five pound on that to win. Five? Just on the one horse? Well, that's what the good captain tells us. Now, he's done all right beer so far, so I think we should stick with him. There you are. There is my investment. Yeah, all right then. I'll do the same. At a girl, Hilda. Who dares win? It's ought to be our motto. Now, it's a bit early for no one to get that. Oh, it's you. Hello, Mrs. Ogden. Hello, Sally. Hey, yeah, and th th you can drop them cigs and things round any time you want, Hilda, and thanks very much for the offer. Oh, yes, it's no trouble. <laughs> He's not got you running errands for him, has he? There is me and my mum live here, you know. Yes, but I'm here all day on my own, aren't I? Don't let him take advantage of you. You've got enough on your plate without having to run after the likes of him. Oh, I don't mind. Bit of neighbourliness never hurt anybody. Very true, Hilda. Oh, now, now, don't fuss. I can see myself out. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. You're enjoying this, you, aren't you? Don't deny it, you're having the time of your life. Well, if I am, shows you what kind of life I've had up to now, don't it? You want a cup of tea? All right, go on. Now, I'll tell you what being laid up has done, though. It's given me time to think, time to weigh things up. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, look at your great scholars. Your Indian gurus, you never see them running. Keith Joseph, he's another. They sit down a lot, you know, let all the energy go to the brain. Hmm, and that's what you're after doing, is it? Some other sort, yeah. I was watching that Open University the other day. I reckon I could walk one of them courses. Yeah, couldn't fill in the application form. You'd be surprised. I like wouldn't, oh. <laughs> is that what you'd have to be, an immature student? Nah, I probably won't bother, no. All as I'm saying is being stuck in here all day, with no distractions like, gives you time to study. And I find that uh, extremely profitable. <laughs> Yes, speaking. Ah, oh, right. Thank you for phoning back. Only I believed you installed the windows for Fashion Tracks. Fashion Tracks, the new shop in the precinct. 
Yes, well, we're doing an advertising feature, and we're inviting everybody who worked in the shop to come in on it. Won't be a minute. Well, there's all sorts of possibilities. Could I come round and talk to you about it? Well, right now, if that's convenient. Right. Look forward to seeing you. Bye. Don't tell me. Number eight. You're going around to see him? Yeah, poor fool. Is he? You won't know what's hit him. I'll dazzle him with facts and figures. And if that doesn't work, I'll chain myself to one of his aluminium frames and refuse to leave. I must get you to deal with the printer. He's not so easily dazzled. Your pleasure. Oh, by the way, Deirdre called. She's got something to tell you. What? She wouldn't tell me. It had to be you. It's good news, though. You're not to worry. Oh. Well, I won't, then. Bye. Bye. Uh, what sort of good news? Did she say? No! Oh. He's not just good looking, he's a good cook as well. Who's that, Sam Tindall? <laughs> no, he's used to now the man the beast, not him. Percy, I mean. He's cooking that Christmas pudding for Robert. Get away. Oh, yes. And I shall be buying tickets, bootfuls of them. Oh, yeah. Table four, Martin. Well, what are you going to do if you win? You can't eat a full pudding by yourself. I know, but I shall ask him to join me and share hey. it with me. <laughs> Have you got any meeting for potato pies? Yeah, I'll talk cold. Oh, give us three to take out. Oh, hang on a minute. Terry? What? Are you having your dinner? Yeah. Oh, I met that too, then, because you're already catering for one at family. Go on. Well, it's one of those old-fashioned fire guards. Yeah. Well, I said, Mrs, is this for throwing out? And she said, yeah, I've got some new central eating. So I said, right, I'll do your bins for now, then me and my mate will come back this afternoon for the fire guard. You're working well, curly lad. And what have you been doing this morning? Oh, one thing and another, you know. As long as you've not been just hanging about. Curly, look, the difference between me and you in this partnership is that I'm the full-time member and you are the part-time member. And don't let's forget it, eh? Hey? Ciao, love. Hello, love. Oh, ain't that nice, there? Eh? Your husband's come to see you in his dinner hour. It'll be covered, love. It'll come for a bacon sandwich. Well, none of them come for no cake. Just be thankful it's only a bacon sandwich as after I would be. See ya. Well, was I right? Is it a bacon sandwich? Yeah, dead right. Just right. Is your mum back yet? Not that I know of, no. I bumped into your mum this morning, though. Yeah? She's still determined to, you know, like she said last night, put George before her religion. You don't think she should? I'm not saying whether she should or she shouldn't. I don't go bombing a religion at the best of times. So? So? I'm not all that keen on George, either. Well, I'm glad you made it back, love. Oh, well, the roads were clear. Some days are chock a block and others are uh, quiet, you know. Well, sit down, George. Hi. Do you like you're acting like you've never been in the house before? Listen, I've, uh, I've something to tell you before we have dinner. Well, it's about... Well, you can guess what it's about. Uh, Ivy, look. What? I, I do understand, you know. Well, no, love, you don't. No. I do. Look, I might have sounded right sympathetic, but I'm a Catholic, you know. Not a good one, but enough to understand that... Well, I know why you can't marry me if I was a last man on that, so... Look, I know the church says that. Of course I do. I had Father O'Brien round here spelling it out. Round here? Yeah. But it struck me there's something wrong, isn't there? And it's not between you and me, love, is it? I mean, all we want to do is to be happy together. That can't be wrong. But the church says we can't, so... It has to be church that's wrong. I wouldn't quarrel with that. You try telling him. Look, what I'm trying to say, George, is that uh, I've changed my mind. I would like to get married in register office. I would. Ivy. Look, I don't care what Father O'Brien says. I don't care what the Pope himself says come to that. They're only human beings, aren't they, after all? I mean, how can they be sure what God wants? Happening in 20 years' time, they've changed their minds about divorce. Well, I'm just changing mine ahead of them, that's all. Have you thought what this will mean? Yes, it'll mean I can be happy with you instead of being miserable on my own in this house. Have you thought what it'll mean in terms of your religion? I have, yes. You wouldn't be able to receive the sacraments. I know. And in their eyes, we'd be well living in sin or as good as it. I know that as well. And you could ignore that? Yes. It's not the way I prefer it. Of course it's not. But sometimes you have to make one sacrifice for another, don't you? And I want you, George. I do. I want us to be married. In a registry office? Yes. It's not wrong, 
wrong with that, is there? No, no. The way you're picking at it. You still don't believe me, do you? You don't think I'll go through with it, do you? You think I'll change my mind at last minute? Because I won't, George. Honest, I swear I won't. I believe you. Well? It's just that what, what you're giving up, it, it's too much. But it's what you asked me to give up. Then I shouldn't have done. Oh, now, come on, George. You're a Catholic, Ivy. More than I am, more than I'll ever be. That doesn't mean I have to agree with everything they say. Oh, but some things you do. And getting married in the registry office is one of them. No. Part of you will always be saying it's wrong. It won't, George, and if it does, I won't listen to it. Ivy. George, what are you trying to say to me? Now, come on, be straight. Is it, is it that you don't want me now that you've struck up with Pauline Walsh? I mean, is that it? No. Well, it's sounding like it. Pauline's a friend. It's not Pauline. I don't know what you're thinking that. Well, then tell me. You said to... If I asked you to marry me in the registry office... Like you wanted. Like I wanted. She'd never forgive me. But I'd have nothing to forgive you for, George. I'd be doing it of my own free will. Then you'd never forgive yourself. George. Look, I'm not worth your religion, your God. You're giving up too much and sooner or later, well... Sooner or later, you'd regret it. I wouldn't. You're wrong, George. You are. You are wrong. Happen I am. But what a risk. I mean, getting married and, and, and waiting to find out. I'm sorry, Ivy. I'd better go. George! I shouldn't have come. I'm sorry. George! Ah, oh, caught you this time. My on-the-spot reporter tells me you've got good news for me and I've got the first to hear it. Hey, uh, you're not... Uh, what? Uh, uh, oh, no, not pregnant. Oh, no, no. <laughs> just occurred to me. Oh, uh, in a way, you could say. Uh, you're pregnant in a way? Well, not in a way that's going to give me another child, but in a way that'll give you one. Uh, do I get a prize for guessing this? You get a prize anyway. From Ray? Yep. From an older, wiser, and more generous Ray, by the sound of it. Oh, marvellous. Yeah. He's agreed to us adopting it. Yeah. Since I now have a family of my own over here, I can understand how you must feel towards Tracy. I'll have no objections if you want to go ahead, adopt her, and, of course, change the name to yours. Told you it was good news, didn't I? And you were. You were right. It was wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you, Ray. I take back all the nasty thoughts I ever had about it. Uh, not all. He deserved one or two of them in his time. Yeah, well, some of them. <laughs> so, well, we set the wheels in motion, and young Tracy Langton is transformed into Tracy Barlow. Magic? Oh, not quite. We have to go to court, don't we? Yeah, well, first we apply, then they have to check you out to make sure you're a fit and proper person to be a dad. Uh, well, I'll be on my best behaviour. And then it's a quick trip to court, and hey, presto. Wonderful. What's in a name, eh? Uh, quite a lot, if you're stuck with the wrong one. <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> have you told Tracy? No. Uh, don't tell her till I get her. No, I won't. I want to see her face when you tell her. And I just wanted to see yours. We're in the money. We're in the money. There you are. £24.50. That's a four-to-one win, minus tax. Did you do the same? Did you put a fiver on for yourself or no? Yeah, I did. I nearly didn't, though, cos I thought, oh, it can't happen again. Of course it can, and again, and as many times as we like. The only problem will be when the bookies round here start banning us because of the amounts of money we're winning. Can they do that? They can try. I will start disguising myself, then. Wear wigs and dirty great sunglasses. Here. Yeah. There's nothing illegal about all this, is there? Hilda. Would I get you involved in it like that? Well, no, I suppose not, but... Well, it all seems that easy. I just can't believe it. It is only easy because of the genius of Captain Carstairs, bless him. And the way that uh, fate threw the fruits of his genius in my more than capable hands. Now, that is the only thing that's making this easy, Hilda. Yeah, yeah, of course, I can see that. <laughs> so what about tomorrow, then? You're flipping keen, aren't you? Getting in the swing of this, you. Well, who wouldn't be after what we've been winning? Come. <laughs> 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 what are you doing, coming in the back door? Well, why should I come in the back door? It's my house, isn't it? Coming out chimney for a while. Yeah, make sure there's a fire lit then, eh? Look, I just walked around Emma with Cheryl, that's all. So what can we do for you then, Hilda? Oh, well, uh, I... She just, just... just brought me my evening paper, that's all. Yes. Ah, oh, got a paper round now, have you, on top of all your other jobs? 
No, I haven't. I was only thinking of your husband and his incapacity and what bit I could do to help. I'm sorry if that doesn't meet with your approval. Well, he has got me, you know. Yes, I thought of that as well. Well, I'd, uh, I'd best go and get Kevin's tea out now. I'll say good night. Right, uh, good, good night, Hilda. Thank you very much. Good Samaritan, that's Hilda. No, they park them all like. Leave her in here on her own for two minutes. She'll be through them oh. cupboards and them drawers like a furry. No. She would. <laughs> Now what you upset? A bit of cramp, love. Gotta keep the circulation going. Oh. 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 Hello, love. Are you shooting all those space invaders down? You do oh. right, love, the nasty little beggar. Hey, don't encourage him. I'm trying to get him off it. Oh, fellas, you're never doing the right thing, are you? You ready, Chuckles? Come on. I'm ready for out. Oh, your coats. Hey, we'll be going now, love. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I won't be long myself. Okay. See, she goes straight home, aren't you? See you tomorrow. Hey, you, no loitering outside that snooker all tonight. I'll loiter where I want. Right, you. Last game we said and last game it is. All right. Come on, Chuckles. Let's go. Come on, Chuckles. 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 Come on, I wonder if uh, you'd all like to come round for your tea, eh? Would you like to come to Nana's for tea tonight, eh? Yes, I would, yes. <sighs> hey, Nick, go on. Another game of nuts, I'm gone. Hey, come on, sit down. Man. What's been going on? You've been crying, haven't you? Yeah, just a bit, love. But I've no cause to, because it's off at best. It's God's way of showing me, and I'm grateful for him. This is to do with George, isn't it? I might have known. George, yeah. Listen, promise me you won't say anything, will you? No. Of course we won't. It's just that, uh, when I told him, you know, that, uh, what I was thinking, that we could have got married in registry. You told him? Well, uh, he don't want me. He don't want us to get wed. In case I regret it, you know. Well, I don't know it. Anyway, I got my answer loud and clear. Oh, Ivy. Well, like I said, love is for the best, isn't it? I mean, there were me, I was setting myself against God and his church. They say he moves in mysterious ways, don't they? Happen this is one of them. Happen it is. I'm so sorry. I'm a silly woman. No, you're not. I'd like to have a word with that fella. Brian. Well... No, no, Brian, don't. It's my fault. I've got my desserts and... There's no need to go and have a word with anybody, love. Look. Are you sure you want us to come for us teas? Wouldn't you rather come to us? No, you you come round to me, okay? All right. Come on then. Come round, get him off that thing. Yeah. Come on, Ivy. We're all on your side. Do you know what I think, love? Despite what he said. Well, he doesn't love me anymore. I think that's top and bottom of it. He used to, but not anymore. What are you lads doing then tonight? We've got to go and see a woman on Selby Street, give her an estimate for moving some furniture. Oh, go in it, eh? Cash and all, all your back pocket stuff. <laughs> hey, don't you be putting ideas into that. Oh, they don't need me for that. Here he is, other half of the double act. Has he been telling you about his plans to join Open University? His what? You're not yeah. like you, Mr. Duck. <laughs> Open University, eh? I've seen him have problems with an open door. It was just <laughs> some programmes I was watching, that's all. This we better be off. I'll see yeah. him, I'm all right. Right, love. Hey, see, you've got a key away if you're going out. Good better away. take the spare. Hey, and you find out what the, these folk do for a living and all before you start giving them estimates. Make sure they're not tax people are out. Mr. S. Ogden, 13 Coronation Street. Give What's it that? S. Ogden? About horse racing. Yeah, it must have come to the wrong house. You know what the post office are. I mean, they can't find their own address half the time. You know something about this, don't you? Me? Yes, you! I can tell! Gee, don't with me. Why do I know how about it? That's why Mrs. H. Ogden were in here the other day, weren't it? You two's been conspiring behind my back. No. Well, I think you have. Why else, when I come in from work, we both stood there laughing and joking? Will you make it sound like we're planning to run away? Well, you might be, for all I know. Uh, tell it, shall well, we? Well, hang on. Uh, Peter hasn't finished yet. Yeah, come on. Come on, tell us. 
he'll do a put in a few bets on for me, okay? We, we were a bit lucky, and that's all. Oh, well, you're not lucky now, are you? Is it? Because eh? that woman's not setting for all of my doorstep. Bark. Do you know what I That woman coming in here comes on me husband under my own roof? Well, we'd better be off now, Dad. I'll see oh. you later. All right. Hey, you, you don't want a third opinion, do you? Sit down, yo. You haven't heard the whole of my opinion yet. Good. Oh, hello, love. I didn't expect you to still be open. No, well, I shouldn't be, really, but I'm waiting for somebody. And seeing she's got me car, I've no option, have I? Did Deirdre tell you about the letter from Ray? Yes, she did. It's wonderful, isn't it? You know, I never understood why I held back for so long, letting her have a name changed. Still, he seems to have seen sense at last, doesn't he? Tracy was delighted. And uh, did she uh, understand what it was all about, like? Surprised me how much she did understand. She began to worry about why she got a different name for everybody else. Oh, they miss no kids, do they? And she's such a nice little lass. You know, it's a shame for her to go through life with that hanging over her. We've been celebrating with hamburgers and milkshakes. Right, Joe, you know how to push the boat out in the bar, don't you? Well, uh... Hello, love. Bye. Hey, don't you feel that you have to stop, you know, and make him late for his bedtime? Because I'm all right now. Are you sure? Well, don't I lock it? Yes, you do. It was just when I first got home, love, you know, after bottom and took the crossroad all afternoon. I'm right as rain now. Hey, Nicky, do you want some pop, darling? And some biscuits? Yeah. Come on, Please. Then, Angel. Please. Go on, darling. Take you to the kitchen. And some chocolate <coughs> biscuits. Some more pop. You're pleased, aren't you? I'm not pleased that what my mum's been through, though. No, but. I mean, I, I was never all that keen on getting married anyway. No. I don't know why, love. I just. Well, maybe it's for the best, then. Mm. I'll get it, Mum. Oh, Brian, thank goodness. Let me get in. What's up? Oh, I don't want Alf to see me. I don't think he can have. Are you all right? Well, I'm all right. Yes, I'm the only one that is, though. Hello, Ivy. Hello, love. Oh, he's going to kill me. I know he is. He's going to go berserk. Brian, you've got to help me. Well, what's happened? Well, hardly out. I mean, it was just like a little bump. I got out thinking it would probably be just a scratch. You've had an accident? Oh, ma'am. Hey, there's nobody hurt, is there? No, no. I was just squeezing past this bollow coming out of a car park. I mean, why'd I have to put a blinking bollow there in the first place? I'll never know. And you hit it? Well, yes, I did, yes. Oh, but you can fix it, can't you, Brian? I've left it parked outside your garage. Uh, does it still drive okay? Yes. Well, more or less okay, yeah. Oh, surely you can fix it, though, Brian. Well, you can. Can't you? I took bad manners reading at the table. One thing my father could not abide, he hated to see people reading in the house. If you want to read, he used to say, there's a place down the yard. I remember one time studying the hotspur at the table, like you, and he belted me that hard, two buttons flew off my shirt. A very strong fellow was your grandfather. He could belt loud than anybody I ever knew. Get off, will you? Oh, come on, Terry, you've got all day to read the paper. I need it. I'm starting to do my selections. Are you still at it after all I've said? Mum, if he wants to chuck his money away, let him. Who's chucking his money away? I am betting on scientific principles. It's what you lot don't understand. I'll tell you what I understand about your betting. You went behind my back, didn't you? Yes, with another woman. Oh, come on, Vera. You can't call Hilda Ogden another woman. How could you do it, eh? How could you get another woman to give you money? She lent it me, that's all. And will you give over calling Hilda Ogden the other woman? It makes me sound as if, like, you know. Do... Yeah, well, it's worse if you ask my opinion. Look, there's not more intimate than money. No. I mean, there's many a woman sleeps with a man and she's no idea how much she's earning. Hilda was entitled to a cut, wasn't she? I mean, in the first place, it was their Stanley system. And in the second place, if you lot have helped me out, then I wouldn't have had to borrow it, would I? Look, if I've got any money to spare, I won't give it to you. I'd stuff it down, great. You're not getting none of mine, neither. You can keep it. I'm betting with me winnings, aren't I? Winnings. How much? Go on, how much? Well, a couple of quid, you know. Well, you better keep hold of it, sunshine. Because when that's gone, you get a note off me. I've said I'll do my best. I can't do any more than that, can I? Well, it's got to be mended today, Brian. It's just got to be. Audrey, love, it's not the job itself. It's whether I can get the parts. Well, why can't you get the parts? Alf's car's not foreign or anything. It's a very old model. I'm going to need a complete new lights assembly and a new bumper. Oh. Look, anyway, love, we may be lucky, all right? Time we were off, Brian. Okay, I'll just go and clean my teeth. 
Vicky, have you cleaned your teeth? Haven't you? Well, come with me then, come on. You know how much Alf loves that little car. I wouldn't mind it, it wasn't even my fault in the first place. I mean, fancy having a bollard in such a damn silly place. Oh, yeah, and then it just jumped up and collided with the car, did it? Gail, okay, oh, come on, don't be sarky. You know what it's like when you're trying to get out of a car park, you're fiddling in your handbag trying to pee the fella. The last thing you expect to see is a bollard, isn't it? You know, I just hope Brian can mend it because Alf is going to go mad. I don't know why you're working yourself up into such a lather. Uh, all right, so you're giving the car a knock, but worse things happen at sea, don't they? Why don't you just go to Alf, tell him what's happened, and tell him you're getting it fixed? I can't do that. Why not? Because they're unbalanced about things like that, men. No, I just have to get it mended without him knowing. Alf's not like that. Gail, they're all like that. You know, they think we're not fit to even touch their precious cars, really. No, I'll have to see to it. I've had the experience. Just <coughs> let me handle Alf in my own way, right? Hey, you're coming quick. Why, what's up? Well, you never know. He's having a nosy over at the factory, do you? You should have nipped round the back way, you know. What for? Well, just make sure that nobody saw you. Well, it doesn't matter to me who sees me. I've got nothing to hide. Oh, no, I know. But we're going to have to box clever now. She knows our Vera. Knows what? about our little partnership. And I said to her, look, Vera, I said, it's strictly business, I said. Yes, well, it is. I know, but you know what women are like, don't you? I'll put that another way. Our Vera is a very hot-headed woman, and broadly speaking, over the years, I've found the less she knows about what's going on, the better it is for me. Oh, well, I can't be doing with anything underhand, mate. Oh, no, no, quite right, I'm the same. So we'll uh, keep our little arrangement to ourselves, eh? Right. Now, is this no, no, look, I'm sorry. I can't be having no secrets between husband and wife. Oh, Hilda, she'll make my life a misery. Now, what she doesn't know won't hurt her now. Now, here's the selection. No, no, I'm sorry. Look, I can appreciate your demeanor, but I'm having nothing more to do with it. It's got to be all open and above board, or not at all. Oh, well, in that case, it's not at all. Seems a bit of a shame to me, you know, but because it was your stand system in the first place. Yes, well, I'm only glad it's been useful to you. And it just shows my Stan knew what he was doing, doesn't it? Eh, you wouldn't chuckle. It was a great partnership. One of the most successful betting syndicates in history. And I'll tell you this, I'll always tell you what horse Captain Carstairs' system turns up, and then you can make your own arrangements, then. No, you needn't bother. No, I'm not bothered about the horses, really. Ah, I suppose I'll have to trundle down to the betting shop myself. Still, be good for the leg, won't it? He'd have been real pleased, you know. Who? Stan. Oh, he always said Captain Carstairs was a, a very well-educated man. An officer, a gentleman, and a scholar. That's what he always said. Right. I think I'll get off and get some dinner in a minute, Alfie, if that's all right with you. Oh, and you haven't forgotten it's my afternoon off, have you? Don't worry, everything's under control. Right. Oh, my word, Curly. Six boxes of cup of soup and six packets of crisps. You're definitely not shopping, shopping for Emily Bishop, are you? No, no. Supplies for the yard. You know, the kettle's always handy if you want some soup. Oh, you're going to settle in at the yard then, are you? Well, in my opinion, we'll be looking for somewhere a bit more impressive soon. You're doing all right, are you? You and Terry? Well, touch wood. I can see the day coming. We're going to take on extra staff. Extra staff? Eh? What do you mean? Commissioners, lift men, catering manageresses. <laughs> No, not for a bit, no, but I dare say we'll need someone, you know, to answer the phone and make out the bills, you know, like a, like a secretary. Oh. This wouldn't be a roundabout way of offering me a job, would it? Pardon? Well, I used to work at your yard, you know, doing exactly what you've just been talking about. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, mind you, I'm going back a few years. I expect you were still in short pants. Ah, uh, it's not on, you know, you budding tycoons coming round here putting my precious stuff. Oh, no, no, Mr Roberts. I mean, to be honest with you, if we did have a job going, we'd be offering it to your Susan. Susan? Which Susan? Do you mean my Susan? Kent's dog? Yeah, of course he does. He fancies her, doesn't he? I'll just get these back to the yard. Sirrah, <laughs> Curly. Oh, you've embarrassed it. Good. Keep his glance working. <laughs> Right, well, I'll get off before the rush starts. OK. Oh, I'll oh, well, say, he'd be glad to see you. He's been worrying about his motor. Yeah. Sarah. Sarah, you haven't, have you, Alf? What? Be worrying about your car. Ah, by yeah, cos... Oh, you brought it back, though, have you? Cos I've got some deliveries to make. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, I haven't brought it back, no. Oh, something happened? No, 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 no of course not. It's just that, um, well, when I got back from Birmingham, it was that filthy, you know, all them lorries on the M6 throwing mud all over it, so I thought... I'd get it valeted, make it nice and clean for Alfie. Oh, you need to bother for me, oh, love. Oh, come on. It was very nice of you to lens it me. You, you think a lot of that little car of yours, don't All you? Right. Well, you'll definitely have it back this afternoon, Alf. Definitely. Fashion tracks are going to love it. It's a great opening spread. Think it looks OK? Terrific. Quite professional. 
Oh, I didn't mean to say you're not professional. I just meant... The old man gets better with experience. <laughs> Something like that. Honest, Dad, I think it's great the way you moved into newspapers. Making a whole new career for yourself at your age. Uh, not so much of the at your age. Just the nine supporting ads. Wish I could have got ten. What's the deadline for the printers? Four o'clock. And in my opinion, he did remarkably well to get as many support ads as this. I would have liked to have got ten, though. Still, all that legwork's been worthwhile. I made a few good contacts. Did I tell you about that one? Mr. Parker put in the sound system for fashion tracks. Oh, what about him? He says if you ever want any stereo equipment, I can have 20% discount. 20%, eh? Nobody offers me discount. It's the legs that do it. <laughs> no, I tell a lie. It was offered discount. But it's only on shelving at a do-it-yourself shop, and it wasn't 20%. You've got to have the legs. So how come you think of selling it? Ashtrays full up, are they? <laughs> I'm just toying with the idea, that's all. Thought I might give myself a Christmas present. So will you, uh, you know, have a look at it? Give it a service? Yeah, sure. Great. I'll get George to drive over tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry, mate. I'm at bursting point tomorrow. End of the week's the best I can do. Well, you're busy. I thought this was a slack time for your garage, but... Oh, I don't know. I must be doing better than I thought. <laughs> right, well, I'll tell you what, then, um, uh, I'll get him to nip it over on Friday, all right? Yeah. See, See you, mate. mate. Oh, uh, Brian, I've been looking for you. What are you doing sat there? Uh, I'm just trying to wait a pilot, all. So. Oh, I've just been to the garage looking for you. Uh, have you done the car? Uh, no, not yet. What happened? Brian, oh, and you're sat there feeding your face. Calm down, will you? I've not done it because I haven't got the parts. Oh, Brian. Well, I said it'd be tough. I've phoned around practically everywhere I can think of. Well, I've got to get the car back to help today, Brian. I'm desperate. I'll keep trying. I may find someone with a parts this afternoon. And if I do, I'll get straight on with it. Now, I can't say any further than that, can I? No. Anyway, you can have a drink. Yeah. What do you want? Emlock, arsenic, anything like that. I'll get you a gin, eh? It doesn't work as quick as them you mentioned. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, best show willing and get to work. I'll see you soon. When do you think? Tomorrow night? Oh, I doubt it. More like the weekend, I'd say. Oh, Frank. Can't be how. You know what the hotel trades like this time of year? All sorts of do's on. Well, maybe I'll come over and see you about the middle of the week. Mm. You better give me a ring about that. I see. You don't like being taken by surprise, then. <laughs> My darling, you always take me by surprise. <laughs> see you. See Bye. You. Bye. Right out, please, love. Right. No, I don't all with it myself, you know. I mean, to me, it's as bad as a bloke being alcoholic and giving him a drink. Thanks, Hilda. What are you going on about, Mira? I'm about somebody giving our Jack money for gambling. I think it's wicked. I mean, it's bad enough as it is without egging him on. I don't know what you mean by that, egging him on. I just try to be a good neighbour, me. Well, you can't help taking pity on a fella, can you? When he's an invalid and his wife won't help him. Look, I'm trying to keep him out of debt, not lose his money on horses. Oh, we didn't lose, though, did we? We won, thanks to my stamp system. Oh, aye, a couple of quid. I mean, that don't... Excuse me, we won £50. Well, £50 all but a few pence. £50? Well, they never said out about that to me. Vera, man, Vera. She'll kill him. She will, she'll kill him. Yes. Well, I dare say he's used to it. <laughs> Lied. How long are you going back now, love? About your betting. You told me you'd only won a quid or two. Well, I happen to know it were a lot more. I happen to know it were 50 quid. Ah, you don't want to believe in these wild rumours, V. People build up the tale. They exaggerate. Oh, no. This was straight from the horse's mouth. Cows, more like. Flaming women cannot keep their traps shut. Well? Well, what do you mean, well? Well, have you known to say? How could you do it, eh, to your own wife? You humiliate me like that. Hey, now, fair dues, it be your own fault. I had a search horse there with no money to put on it, and I begged you, didn't I? I begged you to lend me a couple of bob. Well, how did I know, eh, that you're going to win? There we are. See, you've got no faith in me. Your own husband, and you forced me to seek financial backing elsewhere. Well, I'll tell you this. That's an end to it. Any more bets you have in future, I'm your partner. Me. Nobody else. Me. All right. Fair enough. Doesn't bother me. If you want to get in on a good thing, that's all right. If that is what you want. A flaming well do. Right. You're in. Now then. Captain Carstairs' system today turns up not one horse, not two, but three. Three? 
You mean you picked three? I have not picked them, Vera. The system has picked them. Now, I suggest we do a treble. Five pound win treble. All these uh, horses, reasonable prices, none of your odds on favourites. How much do we stand to win? Well, if the average price of each horse is uh, four to one, reckon about 500 quid. 500 right. quid! Keep your voice down, these balls are paper thin. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, two pound fifty you want off me, is that right? That's it. Hey, but what if two of these horses win and one doesn't? Good point, Vera, good point. I can see you're going to be an asset to this partnership. We'll cover herself. We'll back each horse singly and all. That's three separate five pound win bets. Can't afford it, can you? Well, if you can, I can. In fact, let's do it properly. Let's not be mugged. Let's cover the doubles as well. So if two out of the three win, hang on. That's three singles, three doubles and a treble, five pound a time, seven bets. 35 quid. 35 quid, my wife? Well, this way, if all the three win, we'll have eight, nine hundred quid to come back. Hey, we could do with a bit of luck. It is not luck, Vera. It's got nothing to do with luck. That is the old point of Captain Carstairs' system. All right, give us something on half quid. Happy, are you? Nine hundred quid. Oh, Jack. Get off. Here we are. Uh, and a packet of crisps. A uh, smoky bacon flavour. That suit you all right? Who are you talking to? Dougal. Who's Dougal? Have we not met Dougal? It's his dog. Man's best friend. I'll take your word for it. Do you know his crackers about that dog? He talks to it like it were a proper Christian. <laughs> you can't seriously expect me to buy a raffle ticket, Mrs Bishop. Why not? It's a good cause. Have a word of that. In any case, I'm talking to the organ grinder, not the monkey. I made that pudding, didn't I? You can't expect me to buy a raffle ticket for my own creation. It'd be like asking Cecil Moore to do a football pool. Well, I see what you mean, Mr. Sugden. How about you, Mr. Tyndall? Will you buy some raffle tickets for Mr. Sugden's Christmas pudding? No. Oh. Miserable article. What worries me is the prospect of winning. I wouldn't know what to do with the blessed thing. I certainly won't risk eating it. Here, Dougal, come on, have a crisp. Oh, this is Dougal, I take it. <laughs> you can't call that thing a dog. It's more like an overgrown gerbil. Be careful what you say, son. He knows you don't like him. Am I supposed to be worried? If you made one move towards me, he'd tear your throat out. That's their instinct, you see. They always go for a rat's throat. Well, what's wrong with him, Mr. Tyndall? I mean, why have you got him in a bag? Well, he's not as young as he was, that's all. He gets so peace. Are you sure you wouldn't like a few raffle tickets, Mr. Tyndall? It's for a very good cause, the Friends of Weatherfield Hospital. <laughs> and them as eat Sugden's pudding will end up in Weatherfield Hospital. Only ten pence a ticket. Or five for 40p. You wasted your time, is too mean. Go on, then. I'll have 40p as well. And if I win, I'll send that thing to the government analyst. Put me half in there, will you, love? Right. Hiya. Hiya. Are you all right, Vera? Yeah, of course I am. Hey, listen, we've time for a drink, can't we, before we go back? Uh, better give us two lagers. Hey, give over, I've got enough here. Oh, well, just the one there. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're right, we'll do a celebrating tonight. What is it you'll be celebrating, Vera? As winnings. Me and our Jack's invested in a proper bet. No fiddling about. No bit of proper investment. Our Jack's worked it out, scientific. Hmm. My stamp system worked it out, you mean? Oh, no. From what I hear, your, your stamp couldn't make any sale of that system. No, it needed our Jack's brains to work it out. Right, have one yourself, love. Ah. Have you trying to make a cup of coffee? Oh, no, I haven't really. I've only called in to say hello. I'm due to pick Tracy up from school in ten minutes. Oh, right, not to worry. It's just that I haven't had a moment. And Susan disappeared three hours ago on what she described as a working lunch. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Uh -huh. Sorry I've been such a long time. I think you'll agree it was worth it. Where have you been? Well, you know, I was saying I wish I could have got a tenth advert for that new shop feature. Well, I have. Good for you. I thought you'd be pleased. All right, we're just about time to alter the layout, if we're quick. It was a flash of genius on my part. Baldwin's Casuals. They supply some of their special lines to fashion tracks. So I went to see Mr. Baldwin and Bingo. And he wants a double column, too. I see. You are pleased, aren't you, Dad? You don't sound so keen all of a sudden. Yeah, well, I think your dad's pining for a cup of coffee. Listen, I must rush. Pick Tracy up. See you later. Okay, yeah, See bye. you, my love.
I've got the kettle on. You are pleased, aren't you, Dad? I was more than pleased before. It already done very well. Yeah, I know, but that 10th advert just about round it off. I don't know why I didn't think of Mr. Baldwin before. And of course, it did help knowing him. Do you remember he got me that holiday job at his friend's wine bar a few years ago? Yeah, I hadn't forgotten. He didn't recognise me at first, so that changed a lot. When I told him who I was, he was quite friendly. Right, well, let's get this layout finished and get it to the printers. To be quite honest, I'd be glad to see the back of it. Oh, do you have any corn flour, Al? Uh, corn flour, yes, love. It's, it's just over there. You can't miss it. Near the vineyard. Hello, love. Alison, there's something I have to tell you. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you found it? No. I think you better come outside just for a minute. Just a minute, love. Hang on. I'm just dealing with a customer. Oh, I found oh, it. Great. It is very important. Yeah, well, it can't be as important as the customer, love. Whatever it is. I mean, nothing is more important than the customer. Hello. Oh. That's the lot. Right, well, that's uh, 448 then, please, love. Five pounds. Thank you. Fifty-two change. Thank you very much. Can you manage, love? Yes, that's lovely. Thank Call you. Call again, won't you? I certainly will. Yes. Bye. You didn't mind me telling you that, did you? You know, I mean, I can't just drop everything when I've got a customer. I mean, customers are my business, after all. You know, without the customer, nothing. Anyway, what was it about? I think you better come outside. Oh, hey, you brought the car back, have you? Because I needed to make some deliveries. Yeah, yes, I brought it back. Um, well, that's what I want to tell you. What? Well, um, I think I'd better show you. <laughs> I don't know you ladies. You love surprises, don't you? <laughs> now, what is all this about? I thought you said you had it clean. It still looked mucky. Well, the thing is, you see, I've, um, I've had a bit of a bump. Oh, yeah. Well, what? A bump? What? What happened? Well, there was this bollard, oh, you see. Oh, look at the light and the bo Oh, blimey. It's not as bad as it looks, Al. Not as bad. Flaming hell. Audrey. Oh. oh. Well, oh. how did we go on? Oh, oh, my foot, V. I am in agony. Never oh. mind your flaming foot. How much? Good God, woman, do you care more for money than you do for your husband's suffering? Look, don't oh. ask silly questions. How much have we won? We had a bit of bad luck. Dog's body let us down. It fell at the last fence. Fell? Are you telling but, me... But the other two did pretty well, though. Ah, oh, well, I suppose that's better now. Well, I mean, Lace Petticoat came second. Muscle Merchant was nearly third. So I suppose you could say, in, in hindsight, that we should have done them each way. I mean, that would have meant doubling the stake. But like the man says, you've, you've, you've got to speculate. Do you mean we, we've not won? We've lost the lot. No, but we came close, though, V. I mean, the odds were good, better than I thought. If we'd have won, it'd have been over a thousand. Oh, £17.50 down the swanny. Oh, I, and, and, and I paid the betting tax on the, on the stake, so that means you owe me one pound. Call it a quid. Well, you've had that. You're getting no more money out of me. Look, this was just an hiccup, V. A minor setback. We'll get it all back tomorrow. Where's that book? I'll give you Captain Carstairs. Look, you can't blame the system, V. You can't blame the system. It was heavy going, and the good captain does say if it's heavy going, then you've got to adjust. I'll give you heavy oh, going. Oh, that'll be. Give all the... That boot's valuable. Look, the only book you're reading in future is Blame it oh, old doctor. Oh, oh, hop your leg. Oh, my uncle's a fixed. He'd have had it done today, and he couldn't get the... You swore to me you'd take care of that car. Well, I did. Oh, it looks like it, doesn't it? You not only smash it up, you tell bloomy lies about it and all. I knew you'd be upset. Upset? I've got every right to be upset under. I must walk my bloomy head feeling lending in a car in the first place. And all them lies. It's been right eye opener to me, is this? Getting the car valeted, getting it filleted more like. And you be like this. And I'm sorry. Well, crying's not gonna help, is it? No, I can't help it. Oh, never mind about all that. Oh, come on, don't <sighs> cry. What is it? I knew how much you love that little car. It's not a matter of the car, is it? It's a... Oh, come on, don't cry. Oh, how am a swine making you cry like this? No, no, you do right. No, no, it's me. I'm a swine. I shouldn't have never... I wouldn't make you cry for a, for a gold clock, you know that. I'm sorry. No, it's me that should be sorry. How often I am. No, no, you, you're too pretty to let the old looks be spoiled with tears. Oh, well. Come on. <coughs> Really. Look, it don't matter, really. I mean, it's only a flipping car when all's said and done. I know, but I wouldn't upset you, not for the world. Hey, lass. <laughs> oh, 
it look off? Yeah, you look beautiful, lass. I've always thought that, you know. You're a beautiful woman. Oh. I better get myself cleaned up if someone should come in and see me looking at you. They won't. Well, what are you doing? What about your customers? Jigger them. Listen, we're more important than customers. But you said... Oh, well, I say a lot of daft things, don't I? Hey, hang on. Oh. All right. Come on, love. I'm coming upstairs. Nay, it'll be right. We're shot! Let them start, eh? I'm still getting these parts for Aunt's coming. Yes, please, ma'am. I mean, uh, he knows I am. As long as I'm not in a wild goose chase. What did he uh, say when you told him about the accident? Well, he wasn't too pleased to start off with. Well, I bet. But then every cloud has a silver lining, doesn't it? Right, well, let's get this wagon rolling. Nick, say goodbye to Grandma. Bye-bye, lovely. Have a good day. Oh, it'll be a minute. Yeah, you know how late it is, love. Yeah. Nick, come on, son. Yeah. Come on, to school. So, uh, what silver lining is this, then? Well, me bashing into that bollard sort of um, inflamed a few passions, as you might say. So what happened? He wants me to marry him. He what? He proposed to me. And what did you say? I said yes! What do you think of me? Yes. Well, well. What? Well, we were both a bit excited, you know, what with the car and one thing and another. And you know what they say about the cold light of day, don't you? You're not having second thoughts. I'm not, no. Oh, you think he might be? Well, I mean, I don't know, do I? I mean, me crashing the car got him going. I can't do that every time. It'll cost us a fortune. <laughs> I'm sure you won't have to. Hey, listen, uh, don't say out to Brian. Oh, no, 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 no. Till I'm sure. Morning. Morning. Uh... Oh, did you get the bread order altered? The bread order? Oh, heck. Never mind. They'll just have to take what they're given. Uh... Hello, Hilda. Morning. <laughs> well, and did you hear carrying on last night, then? No, no. I... Taxi or something? Oh. Sounded as off. It was just outside here. You must be a grand sleeper if it didn't disturb you. Yeah, I must. Hey, listen, uh, would it be all right if I left you in charge for about a couple of hours? Yeah, I don't see why not. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? No, well, I wouldn't ask, you know, if it wasn't important, my, but it is, it's, uh... Important. Uh, yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, I would have thought serving his customers would be important. Yeah, well, I am here to do that now, Hilda. Do you know, I might just as well have been talking to that till for all the notice he was taking of me. Not sickening for summer, to say. Yeah, I'd just be a touch of councillitis. He does get it every now and again. It's nothing serious, though. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr Baldwin. Hey, I'm just buying in for your flat. You wouldn't believe what cleaning stuff costs nowadays. No, but no doubt you tell me. Right. See, yeah. what happened to that car of yours out there? Looks like someone's attacked it with a hammer. Oh, a bit of a bump, that's all. It ought to be looked up, you tear the ways in your sports cars. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll be back when... Uh... You'll be back. Yeah, I'll... <clears throat> Well, I don't know about him being back. He's never been here in the first place. <laughs> I've been talking to Mrs. Ogden, something to mention this system of yours, uh, this captain somebody or other. Car stairs. Hmm. Apparently, uh, you've been advising it can't fail and persuade him to put money on certain selected horses. You're too late. How do you mean? I have been destroyed in an act of mindless vandalism. So if you were thinking of coming in on it, forget it. I'm not thinking of any such thing. I'm not here on my own behalf at all. I just thought somebody ought to offer you a word of warning. Well, you might not believe this, Percy, but I've already received quite a few words. Some are warnings, some are threats, and some are insults. And all of them off my wife. Be that as it may. But there's no such guaranteed system, not in this world. Now, we're both men of the world, and we both know it. Yeah. But the ladies don't. Not necessarily. No. You let them think you've got such a system, and you'll be storing up trouble. Because they'll take you at your word, and they won't be too pleased when you come unstuck. You don't say. It's your reputation I'm thinking about. You want to get known for leaving folk up the garden path? No. Anyway, I'll be off. I hope you don't mind me speaking out. Any time. Hey, before you go, though. What? You don't know where I could get another copy, do you? I don't know why I bother. Neither do I. Oh, good. Oh. Too much of a shock. Uh, don't 
bit up. Oh, I mean, I, I, I know we said we'd meet in, in shop like, but it could have been a bit awkward. Oh, uh, there's nobody here. No, no, they've all gone. Oh. Well, sit down. <coughs> oh, uh, Brian's still trying to get them past for your car. Oh, right. Well. Well, Audrey, it's about last night. I mean, I realise that you might have thought I was just speaking in the heat of the moment, you know. But I want you to know I meant every word I said. I'd very much like you to marry me. But, uh, well, I'll understand if you want to reconsider your answer. Oh, wow. You do? No, no, I don't want to reconsider. I don't do a heck is like... Hey, come here. <laughs> and he has me frightened to death you're going to change your mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, last night it was a... Uh, a bit hectic, wasn't it? It was lovely. <laughs> oh, aye, well, that's an old, yeah. yeah. But this morning, though, you know, <laughs> I was up at six o'clock. What? Yeah, well, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what to do with myself. Oh, ow. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> there's one other thing, in case it crossed your mind. What? Well, you do know that I, uh, I proposed to Rita Furkler for a while back. Yeah. Well, I don't want you going thinking that you're like, well, second choice. You know, it never crossed my mind. Because she did me the best favour anybody's ever done me, turning me down. It's a favour one or two fellas have done for me in the past and all, so I'm not likely to think out about that. Well, just in case it had crossed your mind. <laughs> isn't life wonderful? Oh, isn't it, Joe? <laughs> so, what do you think? Have I made a difference or what? Well, do you want my honest, no punches pulled opinion? No. I want you to tell me what a good job I've done. <laughs> well, I think you have, as a matter of fact, yes. So do I. Four extra pages. Can't be bad. Except for the lads delivering them. Probably have them complaining about the extra weight. So, uh, do I get a bonus then? No. For productivity? You can stay on, that's your bonus. That's a pretty mean bonus. That's all we can afford. Well, how about some promotion then? To, say, advertising manager. Chief advertising manager. I'll tell you something. Just in case you are interested in my honest opinion. I think you've done a terrific job. Much better than I ever thought you would. Well done. Thanks, Dad. Oh, blimey. One seventy-five is sure. <laughs> Two lagers, pies, crisps, dead sure, yeah. Bah, heck, and the same inflation's under control. I don't believe a word of it. Neither do I, Vera. Yeah, well, I'd like to know bar prices mm. in House of Commons. I bet they're under control in there, all right. Oh, come on, let's get sat down. Excuse me. Do you know that lady? Uh, never seen her before in my life. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, up here's the afternoon shift. After doing a day's work, yeah. Me and all. I've been tying up that dresser, you know, the one with the marble top all morning. The one you said was rubbish. Well, I've changed my mind, haven't I? <laughs> I'm taking it for that antique dealers in Altrincham this afternoon. Him that keeps a poodle. <laughs> oh, yeah, do you want me to come here? Oh, I can handle it. Can I get you something, or are you not stopping? <laughs> no, half a bit, please, then... Uh... No, not for me, I'm off. Just half a bit of them, please. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're stuck for something to do this afternoon, we've got a lodger you might like to take care of. Lodger? Yeah, in the office. Uh, I was going to see to it myself this morning, only I run out of time. What kind of lodger? One that scurries along the floor and picks up crumbs. A mouse? Think big, Curly. Think big. How big? Oh, you mean a rat? The lady's got it in one. Ooh. You're not serious, aren't I? Well, why don't you do something about it? Well, I have done. I've told you. See you, Curly boy. Oh, well. They've got a rat in their yard. Come on, love. Be company for them, won't it? Talking about rats. Yes, Michael? Uh, give us a large scotch. What do you want? A uh, pineapple? Yes, yeah, I feel. So it just shows you, you're never safe in this business of ours. Never. Well, I don't know that you are in any business. Yeah, I know, but I mean, an old established firm like that probably be going, what, 50 years and suddenly bankrupt? Mm -hmm. Well, you are. No. Oh, well, 150 then. And that leaves us with a lorry load of stuff to get rid of. Yeah, well, yes, but there's that new shop we've started supplying, the one advertising in the recorder. So? So as one outlet's closed, another's opened. You're no worse off. I'm not. In fact, you could be a lot better off if their forecast held up. Oh, tell me more. I like it. I like it. What have well, you heard? I just heard on the news. Yes. <coughs> Frankie! Oh, no. don't tell me. A crate of brown and a crate of stout. No. No? Well, only if you want. There you are. I knew it. I'm not saying anything against Audrey. Well, don't hold back on my account, because I believe in speaking truth, mate. Well, she's good-natured, and she's always pleasant company. Drink thought. Oh. No, not what you call that. It's just that everything she does seems destined to fail you, Vera. I mean, take this latest palaver, for example. She borrows house car, she has it for a couple of days, and nearly wrecks it. Oh, I bet he wants so, please. I bet he won't either. I bet on it, car, she's wrecked. What about a chance to land in Alpha now? 
sorry, look. I'll be sure. Of course I'm sure. No, I mean an engagement ring. You don't think it's all like Gould and the Lily at our age. At our age? What age is that? <laughs> over 21. I took me over 20, I've been about 19 today. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I want to do things right, you know, there'll be no shortcuts, no talk cheap. Mm. But actually, they are thinking, I mean, these are like you get from Christmas crackers, are they? <gasps> oh, look at them. No, no, don't look, don't look, I've seen the price. Look, never mind about the price, just choose the one you want. I still can't believe it, I just can't. Well, you believe it when you get a ring on your finger, won't you? <laughs> Yes. Oh, are you positive? Yes. It certainly suits, madam. I don't want out too flashy. Well, do you prefer that one? No, 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 no. no it's far too much. No, I'm just having a last look now. Put them away, for goodness sake. It's a very attractive ring. There it is. Yeah, well, never mind putting them away. Let's, let's see what it looks like on. Oh. It's that bossy. I can see my life's not going to be my own. <laughs> it's a diamond cluster set in 18 karat gold. Oh, yes, oh, Luke. Yeah, well, that's it then. We'll, uh, we'll take that one. No, Alf, no, you can't. I won't let you. Yes, we'll, we'll have that one, thank you. Oh. Right, sir. How would you care to pay? Oh, cash. Oh, thank you, Alf. That's the one you wanted. That's the one you shall have. Well, I suppose it's an investment, isn't it? I mean, it's not like money thrown away. Oh, no, no. Um, <clears throat> is it all right to pay by cheque? Of course. I'll say one thing for her. For who? Audrey. You know what we're talking about before. She seems to get by without working for a living. I think she does not all, don't she? Not like us, working her fingers to the bone. Yeah, she can't be all that deaf, can she? <sighs> Nothing else, I take it? No. So once again, I'm in your debt. You better tell me how you want it paid. Well, I'll have a drink for starters. OK. How about a pound's worth of raffle tickets? Will that make us quit? Raffle tickets? First prize is Percy's own make Christmas pud. What's second? Packet of indigestion tablets. No, thanks. I'd rather have you in my debt. I was hoping you said that. Mm. See, Alan. Thank you. Right, I'd better be going. Mm. Good luck with your rat. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck with your what, did she say? We've got a rat in the yard, according to Terry, who's made sure he's well away while I've got the job of catching it. Well, you won't be worried by that, are you? Well, no, not worried, but it's not my idea of a fun afternoon. Shall I tell you what you want? Better than your poison and all that. A good ratter. A dog. I haven't got one. No, but I have. You've seen it. Oh, being a champion ratter in this time, if I was to go home now and say Dougal, them lads have got a rat that won't catch in his ears and come up, he'd be round your yard like a shot. Thank Thanks, you very much. Oh, well, that's great, but I'll have to have a word with Teddy first. I mean, after all, he's the one who's actually spotted it. Yeah, right -o. Mine. Uh, he hasn't been active ratting for a year or two, but it's the sort of thing a dog never forgets. Like riding a bicycle is for us. Oh, I suppose it must be. Mm. Well, how about next week, then? How would it be if I phoned you then? The new year? Yes, right, thank you. Bye. All right. Yeah. I'm just trying to find somebody who doesn't think that because they advertised last week, they can't do it again. Oh, see, getting fed up with the job, having done one edition. No, I'm not. Think you'll manage another week? If you'll stop trying to be funny. <laughs> yes, I thought it was you. I was just coming back from paying my gas bill and I saw this fine figure of a man striding out along the pavement. And there you saw me dad behind him. No, it was your dad, that's just what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> right, what can we do for you, Percy? Well, seeing you put me in mind of your newspaper, I thought, sight where the iron's hot, I'll just pour, call in and mention my Christmas pudding. Oh, yeah, the one you're doing for the Rovers. Yeah, make a nice little article for you, that, wouldn't it? And all for a good cause, all proceeds to charity. And I'm not in a rush now, if you'd like to interview me. I see. Well, uh, I think you'd better talk to Susan here. She's in charge of current events. I am? Yeah, it's the promotion you were asking about this morning. Well, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. I don't want you falling out about this. Now, which one is it going to be? Looks like it's going to be me. Right. Have you got a pencil? Oh, he disappeared about nine o'clock this morning. Was last seen heading due east in a dented MG. Dented? Oh, dear, he hasn't had an accident, has he? Well, no, he hasn't. But you no. see, he lent the... Yeah. No. I don't know it's where the time went, dear gentlemen. It's all right. Oh, morning, Emily. Morning. Are you well? 
Fine, thanks. Oh, she looks well, doesn't she? She does that, yes. Now, don't worry, love, because I'll make it up to you. I'm not worried. You're OK? No, well, I am, because it was shameful the way I just dashed off without a word of explanation. Yes, it was. If it had been me, I'd have thought, blow him, and I'd have walked straight out. Oh, you would, would you? No. I'll have to remember that. I'm talking about if you'd have swanned off and left me standing behind a till. Oh. I'm not talking about anything else. No, good job at all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're all right for a minute, are you? Right as rain. And then I'll take over. And he will, love. I shall make sure he does. Oh, yes. Are you going to make sure of that, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Well, you tell me. They seem very, um... They do. Shame your mother chucked that bootlet away. I said it's a shame. I heard you. Well, say something then. Well, it's not a shame, no. So you were lucky. You won a few times. You wouldn't have carried on winning. I might have done. No chance. So forget it, eh? Can't. It's on my mind. Look, there's not another copy of that rubbish in existence. And even if they were, and you were able to get your hands on it, me mum would crucify you. You've convinced me. There's a gentleman here to see you. Hey. Yeah. I believe you've got a problem. An uh, R-A-T problem. I didn't say the word else, there'll be no stopping it. Well, we have, yeah. Well, what are you talking about? We've no rats in this house. Down, boy, oh. down. Oh. oh. I think his earring's not what it was. Well, there's no wrong with mine. And I don't know where you've got your ideas from. Doesn't mean here. He means in the yard. No, I didn't mean in the house, missus. Oh, I should hope not. But you mean you've got rats in Rita Fairclough's yard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've been talking to your oppo and he doesn't seem to be having much success in shifting it. Oh, great. So, I thought I'd tell you, Dougal is an expert and he'd do the job with pleasure. I just thought I'd let you know we're available if needed. Yeah, thanks very much, mate. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, best we go and it's past this tea time. Be seeing you. Yeah. Right. Come on, I'll see you out, Walter. Well then, two strapping lads and he had to send for an old fella and a moth-eaten old dog. I didn't send for him. Yeah, but Curly did. And he works on the bins. He thought he'd be mates with all the rats. <laughs> now listen here, you two. I don't want to hear no more talk about rats or mice or all else in this house. Right, my love. And whatever you've got in that yard, make sure it stays there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that on the chair? What on the chair? Ah! Ah! <laughs> well, where are they all? Oh, they're likely to out somewhere. Gail! Yeah? Ah. Typical, isn't it? Be a big moment. There's nobody here for it. <laughs> oh, hello, Alf. Hello. I was just saying, where is everybody? It's like the Mary Celeste, isn't it? Yeah, Brian's out the back fixing Nicky's chain. Oh. No, he's not. He's here. Oh. We fixed oh. the chain. <laughs> just getting a bit dark for Nick to see what he's doing. <laughs> all right, Alf. Yeah, I do. Uh, excuse me, everybody. I've got an important announcement to make. Uh, well, we both have, actually. It's not just me. Well, come on, then. Get on with it. Shh! I shall first remove my glove. Oh. <laughs> da, da, dee. <laughs> Whoa, oh, yeah! <laughs> so you robbed the jewellers, then, eh? I did not. <laughs> Alf and I are engaged, and as soon as we can fix the date, we're going to be married. Oh, that's marvellous. Congratulations, Alf. That's great news. Oh, thank you. It is, isn't it? Great. Best I've had for a long mm. time. I hope you'll both be very happy. Oh, Tarlo. Actually, you you're the first we've told, you know, it's been so hard trying to pretend there's nothing's happened. <laughs> hey, Nicky, what do you think about it, eh? <laughs> yes. Do you think you should get married, Nick? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So do I. I yeah, will be his, uh, what will I be of his, your step-granddad. <laughs> step-granddad? Oh, that's a right turn off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> do you know our reading in paper about a pre-Christmas rush? What time do you think it'll get you? Don't know. Oh, eh? Hey. This might be the start of it. Can I have two packets of crisps, please? Yeah. It's going to be a rotten Christmas. Any particular flavour? Just plain. Right. Right. Well, no, I was just thinking about you. Really? Yeah. I was looking at that head you did for a slice of crisps. Can I get you a drink? No, I just came in for these. Oh. Thanks, love. I thought you might be able to talk me into putting some more heads in that rag of yours. Oh, all right, then. Which am? Come on. No need to make a meal of it. Oh, give him a chance, Vera. Oh. It's all right, Ivy. I'll make it. Oh, I hope. Look who's there. You're managing <sighs> to get out of it, then? It's a struggle. I'm not without pain. No, you're not without money, either. Tricks you two's been up to. Well, and then low, Jack. Nice to see you back on your pins. How are you feeling? All right. Better for the pint. Oh, I'll get it. It's great to see you back. It's great to see you're back and all. Say now what you're front. <laughs> hey, watch it, you. Uh, I'll have a brand new baby, Sham, and what you have now, Oh, no, no, just half a lager for me. Oh. Jack, wouldn't you have better sat down, love? No, I'm, I'm fine, Ivor. You and Vera will sit down if you want. Oh, no, we can't leave you on. State you're in. No, but all right here, aren't we, Ivor? I don't mind, love. Has your Terry caught his rat yet? No, he hasn't. And when he does, it's not his, it's a stray. 
Would you really be interested in placing another advert? Not really, no. But I thought you just I said... I said I'd let you try and persuade me into it. So go ahead, try. All right, ask me why not. Why not? Well, because I don't sell direct. I sell to retail trade outlets. He placed the other one. Oh, well, that was a promotion for a new retail trade outlet. I, I did that to impress them, not your readers. And because you asked me so nicely. Oh, I see. But don't let that uh, stop you trying to persuade me. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You'd like to be wooed and made to feel important. Yeah. Well, I think that's pathetic, really. Oh, well. Oh, I'll be offended, you know. Deeply. Good. <laughs> Mr. Pewin, are you going to make an announcement? Oh, no, I think we'll wait till the notice, eh? Hope they don't take too long about it. <laughs> Hello, everybody! Hi, Hello. Hello. Oh, I think I've just chipped this nail. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. But, uh, Never mind, so much I'm always doing. Uh, I'll, I'll get that, Jack, and, and uh, can we have drinks all round, if you don't mind, Bet? Because Audrey and I would like you to join us in a bit of a celebration. Oh, wait, let's have a look at your ring. <gasps> oh, oh, very good. No, you see, uh, Audrey and me are engaged to be married. Yes. Oh, 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 I won't for oh, another, please. And, uh, one for my, uh, uh, one for Susan. And... You're a dark horse, you are. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Mike. Right. Thank you. Yeah. My tail is still then. Yes, please. Oh, isn't that lovely? You're not dancing on tables, then? I'm in the wrong bit. Well, she's been engaged oh, often enough, hasn't she? <laughs> He's got the hardest bit to come yet. Morning, ladies. Oh, oh thanks, Terry. Morning, Councillor. Oh, morning, Percy. Why, heck if it does you that good, I reckon it ought to be available on National Health. What's that, Percy? This marriage lark, it hasn't even happened yet, and you're a new fella. Ah, oh, well, you could do the same, you know. I can think of at least one lady who'd jump at the chance of making you happy. If it's Phyllis Pierce you're talking about, she's already making me happy for keeping out of my road. <laughs> Have you set a date, then? Ah, right, 23rd. January? February? No, December. December? 23rd? Ah, oh, that's right. Why, yet you don't let grass grow, do you? Well, what's the point, Percy? We both know what we want, don't we? What's the point of waiting? True. Well, you're a very lucky fella. Aye, I think so at all. But you are having a honeymoon? Yes, of course oh. we are. So I haven't a clue where we're going. I know he doesn't want to be away too long. I'm leaving it all in his capable hands. Who's that? Oh, we're talking about the honeymoon. She says Alf's going to surprise her. Really? <laughs> <laughs> talking about where we're going, you clown. Well, wherever it is, he better get his skates on. I mean, Christmas week and all. Oh, he'll sort some of out, don't fret. Well, if Alf can't do it, who can? I mean, with all them contacts he's got on council. Council? What's that got to do with our honeymoon? You can go and exchange visits, can't you? What? Have a look at the new road systems in France. <laughs> Effluent treatment works in Holland. <laughs> I'll crown you. I'll see you later, love. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Goodbye, Audrey. Bye, love. <laughs> he's not the only one that would better get his skates on. You've not got much time yourself, have you? Me? Well, I take it you're not going to get married in that skirt and jumper you turn up to the cafe in. Oh, love it. I have seen just the thing. Smashing little dress in that new shop next to the building society. Do you want me to come and have a look at it with you? No need, Chuck. It's me to a tea. Well, why didn't you get it then? Oh, it's not that easy, is it? Mind you, with me, things never are. Look, ma'am, I mean, if it's the money that's bothering you... What gave you that idea? Well, we just thought that if you needed any help, me and Brian could... I perhaps... wouldn't dream of it. It's a lovely thought, but don't worry. Well, it might be a lot for you to find all at once. Well, you'd be right, no. If it were me, that we're going to have to find it. Who else? Aren't I marrying the most generous, kind-hearted grocer in the whole world? You mean Alf's going to buy it? <laughs> Don't say anything, not just yet. No, I won't. I think it's a lovely gesture. Oh, it is. It's just, um, he doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> Thanks, love. Bye. Bye. You know, I'm still not convinced he's doing the right thing. Well, he always has that paper. Oh, I don't mean him. I mean Alf and Audrey. I mean, well, they're so different, aren't they? So steady and dependable and set in his ways. Look, if Alf and Audrey like each other and get on with each other, why shouldn't they get married? It all happens so quickly. Yeah, well, best way sometimes. Hello. Hello, Hello. Give us two packets of them paper tissues, will you, love? And uh, can I have a look at your engagement cards while I'm here? Hey, you're going to have to look sharp, aren't you? Wedding's next week. Hey, Alf and Audrey. Oh, it's not for her. It's for a girl at work. 
Somebody that's had time to think before she takes plunge. I was just saying that it's all happened so quickly. Oh, yeah, you've got short memories, haven't you? What do you mean? It's not the first time he's asked her. He asked her a couple of years back, oh, remember? That's right. I was forgetting that. I suppose the only surprising thing is it's taken us so long to get around to saying yes. Hey up. Hey up, mate. You're out of bins to empty your summer? No, the lads are just taking a break, aren't they? Uh, listen, I just popped back to tell you that Mrs Griffin on Gas Street, she's got an old bed she wants to get rid of. So I said we'd pop back this afternoon, all right? Yeah, that's all right. Something else, was there? Heard any more of our visitor? Hey? You know. Oh, they're at you, mean? Well, have you? Not a whisper. I mean, look what you're so frightened of. I mean, what harm can it do you, hey? What harm can they do? You ought to come down the tip and see what harm they can do. Some of them as big as flipping dogs. And they can rip open a, a bin bag before you can blink. Morning, you. man. All right, Kev. What are you doing here? Taking a car on the test run, and I suddenly thought, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Terry weren't about to brew up. You know where the kettle is. Go on, Curly, mate. Y yeah, well, I'd best be on my way. You're not a kettle on, can't you? <laughs> not while it's in the office, he can't. Not with our furry friend waiting in there to rip his arm off. Oh, you don't know about that yet. What can we do? Not seen it since. Get some poison down. I'll sort it out. Ah, oh, it can be dangerous, that poison. <laughs> well, yeah, it has been known to be fatal, Curly. No, I mean to other animals, you know, cats and dogs and that. No, no, we can't use that. Oh, well, just leave it then. Wait for all its mates to move in as well. No, I'll get some of this morning. Oh, well, hang on, there is another way. There's always Sam Tyndall. Sam Tyndall? And his dog. What, that walking mophead He's not smart enough to catch a cold, that ain't. Well, not according to Sam. Best ratter this side of the Pennines, that dog. Yeah, well, you dead set against poison. Yeah, we are. Not got a lot of choice then, really, have you? Two sheets. That do you? It'll have to price it is. <laughs> Morning, ladies. Morning. Morning Give us a packet of those extra strong mints, will you, love? Oh. Here you are, just the pal I want to see. Not now, Mrs. Pierce. I can't stop chatting. I promised to have my Christmas pudding on the Rover's Bar by one o'clock. And I have a bit of preparation to do. Oh, it'll not take a minute. I just want to know what you're doing for Christmas Day. Christmas Day? Uh, well, if you're doing now, we could do it together. I'd love the chance to cook a Christmas dinner again. Oh, would you? Well, I'm sorry. You'll have to count me out. I've asked our Elaine for Christmas, haven't I? Oh, I see. Well, if you've made your arrangements, there's not much use in saying any more, is there? No. I'll see you. Bye, Hello. Bye-bye. I didn't know your Elaine were coming. No, oh, will Bill and Debbie be coming as well? I didn't say she was coming. I said I'd asked her. You mean they're not coming? No chance. Well, you've just given Mrs Pierce the impression that they were. Well, I had to say summer didn't I? I've ended up spending Christmas Day at her place. We both be on your own now. I know. And as miserable as it can be, it'd be no worse than being forced to spend Christmas Day with her. I'll see you. You know, I don't think I've got time for marriage, man. Feet have hardly touched the ground all morning. I was hoping to go to the hairdressers, but of course, no chance. Where is he then? Don't tell me he's still got his feet up at that town hall. Look, if you give me a chance to get a word in, no, he hasn't. He's not been back yet. He's not been off that phone all morning. You've not given yourself much time, have you? Still, Alf being on the council's a big help. How come? Well, it's the mayor's rolls, for starters. He's bound to have that fixed up. Do you know, I've always wanted to ride in a roll. Oh, well, you can forget that, love. They got rid of it three years ago. Oh, mean pebbles. The car's not a problem, is it? You've got one. If you think I'm turning up for my wedding in that little thing... Well, if all else fails, you know where to find me. Eh? Baldwin's van. I'll chuck the driver in for now. <laughs> See you. Now, if you'd have said Baldwin's car... Now you're talking. <clears throat> so that's what all the fuss has been about. It's a masterpiece, is that? One of the finest puddings ever made. Well, I've got to give it to you, Percy. That looks almost good enough to eat. All right, you can have a little joke, but I'm telling you, that's the best Christmas pudding you'll ever taste. Talking about little jokes, Percy, I'm still waiting for Bill. Oh, all right, I'm coming to that. There you are. And cheaper the price than all. You're not flaming serious. What's up now? What's up? I said I'd pay for a flaming pudding, not settle national debt. <laughs> well, if you want the best, you've got to pay for it, haven't you? Everything I've used is on that list, except my secret ingredient, of course. Yeah, I know what that is and all now. Gold flaming sovereign. <laughs> Hello, do you love? How are you? I'm all right. Oh, 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 oh Bucker and Tommy, please, Letter. On your own? For now, yes, Alf's on his way. Honestly, we seem to have been rushed off our feet ever since we decided to get wet. Oh, your idea to get married at such short notice. Yeah, maybe it was a mistake. Yes. A mistake? We should have got married tomorrow, then we wouldn't have had to have put up with all this for another flipping week. Oh, <laughs> so he's going around in ever-decreasing circles, isn't he? Personally, that's clever. Yeah. Well, tell him if there's anything I can do, all he's got to do is ask. Oh, oh well, um, actually, yes. Yes, Mike, I think Alf was hoping to have a word with you. With me? 
Yeah, you see, he still hasn't got his best man. Hey, I'm my love. I'd be delighted. I'll get that. Oh, oh thank, thank you. You would? Yeah, why not? Well, I think he thought you might be a bit of a cheat, you know, expecting you to run us about in your car. I mean, we could hardly use his goodwill. Ah, uh, don't think about it. I'll be only too happy to do it. Oh, Tata, but he'll be dead. Sure, I know he will. Cheers. Cheers. It's not just old folk, you know, Mavis. Christmas is a lonely time at any age if you're on your own. Yes, I know that. But we, we're lucky, you and me. I mean, I've got Rita and I've got Carol. It's, it's people like Mrs. Sugden and Mrs. Pierce I'm thinking about. They've got no one, have they? But it is partly their own fault, isn't it? <laughs> If Mrs. Pierce has invited Mr. Sugden and he's refused, well, I don't see there's anything we can do about it. Well, actually, I think there is. If you were to have one of them, we could have the other one at Rita's. Oh, I see. And what does Rita have to say about all this? Oh, well, she wasn't too enthusiastic about it at first, but I'm, I'm sure if you had one, I could persuade her to have the other. Well, I suppose while I'm cooking for two, another mouth won't make much difference. All right, then go on. I'll ask Mr. Sugden. Oh, thank you, Emily. So all you've got to do is persuade Rita to have Mrs. Pierce. Well, he doesn't look like much of a killer to me. Well, of course he doesn't. He's got no to kill you, has he? Yes, he has. A dirty great big rat in there. Yeah, but he doesn't know that yet, does he? Well, don't you think you should let him in on the secret? Look, he's got to be handled right. I've told you. He's a highly trained killer. Now, where did you say this little visitor of yours was last seen? Mm. In there. Right. Give us half hour. <coughs> Come on, old lad. <coughs> Show them what you can do. Greenvale Rooms? Well, we was open to have our reception there, weren't we? We're getting nowhere now. They'll all be booked up, won't they? Well, I know somewhere that isn't. Where? Here. You're not right, Bet. Yeah. That look? We've nothing on here on the 23rd. Not that I know of. They can't find anywhere for their reception. Well, perhaps they didn't ask in right quarters. Mind you, if we're not quite up market enough for them. I mean, it's not quite what some of your councillor mates are used to, is it? Oh, don't be daft. Well, if it's any use, I can offer you to select. Now, coop, finger buffet. Do you want to think about it? No, no, we don't need to think about it. That is just what we want. Good. You've got just what you wanted, then, haven't you? No. <laughs> Same again. Oh, sorry, darling, we've got work to do. Uh, don't you think we should give him another ten minutes? <coughs> no, I don't. If he's, he's got it by now, or he never will have. Now, don't forget it's his customers. Come on. Yeah, I see it. Oh, Betty, uh, go find a bit, please. Yeah. Oh, and uh, have got any hot water? I've been saving it, especially for you. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> oh, Ken, just a chap I want to see. Uh, be with you in a minute, Al. Might as well get that job done while I can. Oh, Best man. <coughs> Oh, yeah, best man there. Actually, I wanted to have a little word with you about that. Yeah, well, Deirdre said that Ken would be happy to do it. I'm sure he would. There's just one thing. What's that? I've already got the best man. Yeah. You have? Yeah, I thought I'd be helping you out. Oh, I see. Well, would you mind telling me who you've got? Mike Baldwin. Mike? Oh, well, it could be worse. You could have asked Jack Duckworth. Oh, no! <laughs> Actually, he seemed very keen. He said he'd take us in his car. He'd ferry us to the registry office and then to the reception and all that. I was doing you a favour. Hey, I think you have a bit sound of it. <laughs> I just wish you'd told me earlier. Oh, right. Hi, hello. Hello. So, what can I do for you? Well, uh... Do you know, he'd forget his head if it were loose. Stag do. Stag do? You know, the do you're having with your mates in here night before the wedding. Oh, yeah, so, if you can make it, Ken. You try and stop me. <laughs> you silly goose. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dougal. Hey. How's it going, mate? Uh, didn't I tell you we're best ratter this side at Pennines? Oh, great. Now perhaps we can get Curly back in the office. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Tyndall. You don't know what a relief it is. Here, well worth a couple of quid. No, no, no. Forget it. Keep your brass. Get yourself a drink or something. No, I don't need it. Forget well, it. Well, get Dougal some biscuits. He's done all the work. Oh, well, if yeah. you put it like that, right. Anyway, I'd best be getting rid of this. Yeah, yeah I'll be seeing you. All yeah, the best, mate. Oh, Thanks, Thanks a lot. Come on, Dougal. See you, Dougal. Come on. See you, Dougal. Well done. Hey up, mate. Yeah, if, uh, if you want me, I'll be in the office, all right? Here you are. 
Now, don't say I don't do anything for you. Oh, Tal, do you know that's the best sight I've seen all after? Oh, will that be the tea or me? No, both of you. It's <laughs> all Audrey, you're saying. Uh, are you not having one? No, I'm on my way. Oh. Have you got your eye on something special? Look, what I've got my eye on, what I can afford, are two different things. I was just saying to our girl this morning, I saw just the thing, at least I thought it was. Then I caught the price tag. Honestly, I thought they were selling the shop. I know exactly what you mean. I was a bit disappointed, actually. Still, got to keep a sense of proportion, haven't you? I'm off down the market. Market? Don't knock it off. You can get some really good bargains there. Yeah, I know you can, but it's not every day you get married, is it? Try telling that to my bank manager. Listen, love, if you like it, get it. I'll pay for it. Do that. I mean, not not me wedding out. Oh well, if it's supposed to be unlucky. Or no, 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 no. It isn't. It doesn't seem very right. That's Listen, not... if you don't want it. Look, call it a wedding present if that makes you happy. He's got away with words, hasn't he? I mean, poot like that. How can I refuse? <laughs> That'd be positively insulted, wouldn't you? You're he, a saint. It, you wouldn't pick me up about uh, five, would you? By the precinct, them phone boxes. You know what the buses are like at that time. Well, it's a bit difficult. Oh, to... you are a love. What would I do without it? When they made Alf, they broke the mould. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose I can interest you in a little plastic Christmas tree while you're here. Half price. Not even if you were giving them away, Tar, very much, love. Do you know, I've had a little one. I think I've had it dunk as yours. I reckon it'll see me out. Do you still put it up? Oh, it gives you something to think about. Do you know, we used to have them parties and niggies up. Kids of today don't know how to start enjoying themselves. You must find it very different now. Eh? Well, being on your own. Oh, you can say that again. But it still has its compensations, you know. Being on your own? Well, you can eat when you want, sleep when you want, no arguing what's on telly. And when you get to my age, so, you wouldn't really thank anybody for dragging you away from your fireside to wear a funny hat and pull a few crackers? I didn't say that, did I? But who wants to be lumbered with me? Say that, love. Ciao, Philly. Bye. All right, you've made your point. She can come to us. But I'm warning you, if there aren't enough mince pies for seconds, you're the one I'll do without. Looks like old Percy's done you proud. Doesn't it? Yeah. So it should and all, the stuff that's gone into that. You can't tell out about a Christmas pud just by looking at it, can you? It's taste what counts. And the first person to taste it will be the one that wins it. So if you want to buy any more raffle tickets, I'm sure Emily can oblige. I can. What would I want to win that thing for? I reckon one mouthful of that and I wouldn't be able to get my boots off the ground. It looks that heavy. So why did you buy the tickets in the first place if you don't want to win it? There's no law that says I can't dig in my pocket for charity, is there? Oh. I'll see you. Good. Hey, up, you're in a rush, aren't you? Well, I'm going home for my tea, aren't I? If you'll get out on my road. Oh, I'm delighted, I'm sure. Oh, Mrs. Bishop, just a lady I wanted to see. Oh. Well, I saw you coming here. I thought that was as good a time as any. Oh. Uh, but first, let me get you a drink. No, I'm all right, really. No, I'm... no, come on, no. It's the least I can do after you've been so generous as to invite me around for Christmas dinner. Well, if you insist. Uh, right. Just an orange juice, please. Shall we go in the snug? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Orange juice for Mrs. Bishop, young lady, and half a bit of me. Coming up. <laughs> so you said you wanted to see me? Yes, I did. It's about this Christmas dinner. Well, what about it? Well, as you know, I spent a fair amount of time in my life satisfying the gastronomic requirements of others. So naturally, when it comes to food, I know what I like and what I don't like. I'm sure you do. Only I thought if I was going to come to Christmas dinner, he'd want me to enjoy it. So I prepared one or two notes on how I like things done. How to make gravy without it being too runny, but not so thick as you can stand your knife up in it. Where to get that little bit extra out of veg. I see. And I've got a cracking recipe for chestnut stuffing. It's been in my family for generations. I'll look that one out. Mr. Sugden, the whole point of inviting you to Christmas dinner was so you wouldn't have to go to any trouble yourself. Oh, it's no trouble. No trouble at all, Mrs. Bishop. No, we're going to have a Christmas dinner. We're not going to forget it, Harry. Oh, you're not bothered you won't be Alf's best man, then? Bothered? The last thing I want at the moment is to assume the role of Alf's keeper. I've got enough on my plate, thank you very much. It's probably just as well Susan came down here. I did have my doubts, I must admit, but the way that girl has worked these last few weeks in worth her weight in gold. It's a pity she's not working for us, honestly. Talk about a one-man band. Alf has been on that phone half the morning. Well, it's only to be expected, I suppose. They haven't given themselves much time, have they? No, I suppose they haven't. 
Still, if he thinks I'm going to run myself ragged for the next two weeks to keep that place going and then... And what? Well, that's just it. I don't know. I mean, when he's got Audrey around there full time, where does that leave me? Do you want me to go and fetch Nicky? Uh, no, no, he's stopping at Darren's for his tea. Is he? Hey, just like old times, isn't it? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying? Ooh, come on. Hello. Hello. Elf, mate. <laughs> Hello, Bright. Brighty, oh. have you left anything for anybody else? Oh, don't you start. I'll send you the pan to rent van if you'd known what I got to pick up. <laughs> isn't he lovely? Do you know, he's brought me the most lovely outfit as a wedding present. Well, let's have a look at it then. Oh, no, you can't do that, lovely. Well, why not? Well, I haven't got it, have I? They're shortening the skirt. Oh. I mean, it's got to be right for the big day. Uh, so just what have you got? Yeah, I was beginning to wonder that and all. <laughs> Shoes. Oh, they're lovely, ma'am. Can you get into them? Oh, you cheeky monkey. No, of course I can't, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> then a handbag. Handbag? No, yeah. They've no idea, have they, fellas? Then I got some gloves and a hat. Honey, I'm not too sure about that. You'll have to tell me what you think when I've got all the get up on. I thought you were going for a dress. I've got to have all the accessories, haven't I? I have got the most wonderful, generous husband to be in the whole world. Mm. <laughs> you seem to sleep in here, don't you? Don't tell me, mate. Tell him curly top in there. I was ready for the offer half an hour ago. Come on, give his hand with this, will you? You coming or what, Curly? Are you stopping here all night? Gives a couple of minutes, I'm straight out. You see what I'm up against? No, oh, well, I'll leave you to it. I want to get washed and changed. I'm off out at seven, whether you're ready or not. I'll be there, mate, don't worry. Are you the boss? Not me, mate. Play him. And what can I do for you, son? My mate said he got a rat in here. Well, we did have, yeah. Only I've lost one. You've lost one? A rat? Eh, to not hurt you. He's dead tame. It's my pet. Your pet? Yeah. Mm. He got out a couple of days ago. I was getting dead worried about him. With him being so tame like, he won't be able to look after himself very well, see? Curly. What? Young lad here. Lost his pet. Pet? Yeah, his pet rat. Reckons it was last seen round here. Oh, heck. Well, what was it like? Brown. Not brown like a wild one, lighter than that. And dead tame. If it saw you, it probably wouldn't even run away. Is that it? Sounds like it. Have you seen it? Well, uh, it was in the office, but he's not here now, or not anymore. How do you know he's not here? Well, well, we would have seen it, wouldn't we, recently, I mean, you know. I might be able to find him. You'll have to tell him, Terry. Give me a word that Sam Tyndall's dog's killed his pet right to break his little heart. Mm -hmm. Right, Keeler. Best let him think it's just took off somewhere. Hector! Hey? Come here, you beggar! It's found, Yeah! Behind your filing cabinet. Mm. Well, hang I on. knew you wouldn't have gone far. Hang on, hang on. Is that the rat you saw? Well, uh, yeah, I suppose so. They all look the same to me, yeah. Don't worry, mister. It'll not bother you again. I'll make sure of that. Yeah, right. I'll see ya. See ya, mate. Well, hang on a minute. That was the rat you saw. What did Sam Tindall's dog catch? Exactly. Well, whatever he had in that sack, it wasn't that rat, that's for sure. Wait till I get my hands on Sam Flaming Tindall. <laughs> You call me. I did three times. Oh, well, I didn't see you. Having time for any breakfast. There isn't any. What, not even a cup of tea? You might be lucky. It might be cold and rusty. I don't care if it tastes like tincture of iodine. My mouth is like the bottom of a soap dish. Do you know I hardly slept a wink last night? I was tossing and turning, wondering if I was doing the right thing or not. You thinking of calling it off? Well, the wedding? It's not too late, is it? Not quite. Good. Good. I thought you were all for me marrying Al. Do you know what this is, ma'am? No, what? It's a list of all the things that have got to be done today. All the many things. And why might I ask, am I writing out this list when it's your flipping wedding? Because you're a better organiser than I am, lovely. Mm, that's the reason, is it? Look, I've got to dash because I've got to make absolutely certain they don't make a mess of shortening that skirt. That's right. You go off, you concentrate on how you're going to look tomorrow. I'll do all the rest, all the labouring. Thanks, lovely. Because I am the kind of star of the show, aren't I? <laughs> Oh, you haven't forgotten about the grub for the do tonight? On the list. Good. Oh, did I tell you? Irene and Sandra are definitely coming. No, you didn't. Well, they are. I'm so excited. Ta-ra. See you later. Morning, Al. 
I said morning, Alf. Oh, good, uh... Morning, I think, is the word you're groping for. Yeah. What are you doing, working out how much you're worth again? No, I'm just seeing how I can afford this wedding. Alf, how can you think about money at a time like this? I've got to see if I can afford it, haven't I? Look, look, this is marriage we're talking about. Plighting your troth, the public acknowledgement of your love for a woman to be followed by its consummation. That's if you've not already consumed. Yeah, well, it's very... You can't put a price on that. It is very expensive. Very expensive. My God, never mind. Where have all the flowers gone? I think Roman seems to have done a bunk as well. It's very sad. Do you know how much they charge down at the registry office for a wedding these days? I've no idea. £41.50. £41.50. You could keep a family of four for a week on that. God. Ivy, which do are you going to tonight? Alf Stag Night or Audrey's Hen Party? Audrey's. Madge, I think I prefer being with fellas. Women tend to get maudlin, don't they, night before a wedding? I'm afraid I do. <laughs> yeah, well, you won't see me exactly dancing on a gate leg table either. <laughs> see ya. Bye -bye. Now, you're not going to go in a decline, are you, just because there's going to be a wedding tomorrow? No, I'm not. Well, you usually do. You didn't speak for a whole afternoon one day last week because you parked behind a wedding taxi in Church Street. I will not go into a decline. Good. Hey, have you got any paper tissues, love? I can feel a cold coming on. Oh, dear. I can always tell my throat goes very dry. Oh. Yeah, I used to go straight to bed and tie my husband's sock round my throat. I can't do it now, being a widow. Well, can't you go out and buy a pair of fella's socks? What use would that be? You've got to have worn them for a couple of days, haven't you? Oh, Phyllis, I was just going to come next door and see you. Oh. Well, we've been talking about Christmas, Rita and me, haven't we, Rita? Yes, we have, I. What about about it? Well, we'd like you to come and spend Christmas Day with us, you know, to have your meal with us. That's right, isn't it, Reed? Yeah. As long as you don't turn up wearing a sweaty sock. Pardon? Nothing. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, I thought you said you were going to be on your own. Ah, well, I haven't given a Paul old purse asking me around to his place, have I? Oh, well, I'm afraid there's no chance of that. And why not? Well, because he's going to Emily's. You see, Emily's invited him to have Christmas dinner with her. Because their Elaine can't come. Mm. Emily Bishop, what does she want going sticking her nose in for? Well, we, um... Well, she, she didn't want Mr. Sutton to be on his own. I had a feeling all lonely and neglected. He wouldn't have been lonely and neglected, would he, if he'd have been with me, and neither would I. Well, no. If you ask me, Emily Bishop would be better off pulling her own flipping wishbone. Well done, Mavis. It's not often you can turn the season of goodwill to all men into a punch-up between two women. Hiya. All right. Has he been in yet? Not a smell. <laughs> Maybe he's rumbled the fact that we've rumbled him and he's keeping out of the way. There ain't no place he can hide, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's him now. Listen, you know exactly what I do. I'm word perfect, mate. Uh, I'm told you want to see me, lads. We do. Uh, what's up now? Another unmentionable. Another? We heard it last night. And again this morning, sniffing. And scuffling, like unmentionables do. Listen, there it is again, Terry. I can't hear anything. Now, you must have heard that. There! Sniffing. And scuffling. You're right. I heard it that time. You have got another one, definitely. So what are you going to do about it? Well, I'll have to bring Doodle round, won't I? I thought you said he'd seen them all off last time. Well, this one must have been away. What, you mean on holiday or visiting? Exactly. Where do rats go for their holidays? Don't ask daft questions. How would I know? Well, you're supposed to be the expert on rodents. Not me. Dougal. Oh, oh yeah. Dougal. Dougal. Yeah, the great white hunter. Yeah. I'll fetch him round this afternoon. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with now? Well, I've just fed him, and I want him all hungry and fierce, don't I? His fangs showing. Of course you do. I'll bring him round this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> you think Dougal's got any fangs or what? I don't think he's got any teeth. Well, he doesn't need them, does he? There's no rat. <laughs> Are all old men crooks? I should think so. Well, my dad certainly is. And my granddad, right, at Christmas time, he used to invite us all round for a drink to his house and try to sell us a glass of porridge. <laughs> <laughs> Hundredth time, Percy. Tickets for your Christmas pod raffle are selling very well. I just want to make sure I put a lot of time and effort into making that pudding. I don't want it raffling for next to now. There'll be a handsome profit for charity, I can assure you. Now, what do you want to soak? Half a better <laughs> and a sherry for my good friend, Mrs. Bishop. Good friend, eh? She's invited me to Christmas dinner, you know. Who is? Mrs. Bishop. Who is she? Well, I wish someone would invite me. Just like I'm going to be stuck with a Chinese takeaway and a senile film on telly. 
Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, I, I thought a tycoon like yourself would be off with a jet set somewhere. Uh, Mustique or St. Moritz. The nearest I get to the jet set is a hot shower, mate. <laughs> well, perhaps if I drop a gentle in to Mrs. Bishop, she could find a place for her at her festive table. No, it's very kind of you, Percy, but I'm sure I'll manage. Oh, well, I think she would be fair to take to take, you know, just me and her. Emily's a saint. She must be. That's what I'm looking for, a saint that looks like Marilyn Monroe. You let her slip through your fingers, Michael. Who was that? Me. <laughs> you carry on with your meal, Mrs Bishop. Uh, I very rarely eat lunch myself. Oh. But we didn't get many lunches in the Western Desert. It was more of a case of keep your head down and suck on a pebble. Oh, really? Uh, I'll tell you about some of my exports in the desert over Christmas dinner. They'll make your hair curl. I'll look forward to it. <laughs> oh, fancy seeing you two. Hello. <laughs> I think the chances of seeing me in here is about ten to one on. Oh, is that port you're drinking, Mrs Bishop? It's sherry. Well, same difference. They're both warm and sweet. You know, I could murder one of them, actually. <laughs> what do you want, then, a port or a sherry? I'd like a port, please, Percy. It's a better shy man, it's Percy, you know. Is he? He acts gruff, just to cover up. Ooh. I believe you've invited him round to your place for Christmas dinner. I have, yes. <laughs> Lucky. Fella. Oh, I don't know. It'll be a fairly modest meal. Turkey, pudding, mince pies, the usual. It sounds more like a banquet to me. Still, anything more. Prospects that I got for Christmas dinner all by myself. Oh, I thought Rita and Mavis... Still, I don't blame Percy. If he's the chance of a nice dinner and a nice cosy home with a younger woman, I'm not one told him to promises he might have made to me. Promises? What promises? I, well, I think I've said enough. I might have got the wrong end of a stick. He might not have asked me to his place for Christmas Day. Well, not in so many words, but a wink's as good as a nod, isn't it? Well, it is to a desperate, lonely old lady, especially one that thinks so much about a chap. I don't think Christmas Day without Percy. I'm sorry. Oh, Luke, why don't you come too? Where? To my place for Christmas dinner. Oh, you're a saint, Mrs. Bishop. What are you? Oh, I'd be delighted. There you are. Oh, isn't it funny how life can turn tears into happiness in the space of a couple of minutes? <laughs> Cheers. Oh, I've never seen you, Mike. Don't tell me. You want someone to run away with Audrey. Oh, she's the least to be worried. No, no, just making sure you're all right for tomorrow. I will be the best, best man you've ever had. Ah, well, you'll be my third, you know. No, I'm just getting a bit twitchy, that's all, you know. Oh, that reminds me. Excuse me, love, but did I order the pies and everything for tonight's bachelor party? Bet, did Alf tell you wants pies and that tonight? Yes, you did, Alf, and that's the tenth time you've asked me. You yeah, see what I mean? I'm going to do lally. I wish I could be as calm as Audrey seems to be. Big step to take, you know, mate. I know it is, I. Just give us a pint, love, will you? Oh, no, make that a whiskey. Oh, it's beautiful, Audrey. Oh, it's lovely. I'm going to look absolutely stunning in it. <laughs> Now, what's I come in for? I know I want some confetti. Not going to throw it at yourself, are you? Ha! Just making sure Gail's got some. Do you know, I've had to arrange this wedding single-handed. Albert. Oh, by the way, now, you're coming for a drink with me tonight, aren't you? Why are we not been asked? You are now. Well, I don't know. Mavis here, we're hoping we'd be the only two women at Alf's do. I was not. Well, you come to my do. It'll be a night to remember. I thought you wanted to look your best tomorrow. Oh. Well, I can always do a quick paint job, can't I? Which is more than Alf can. Unless, of course, if somebody hasn't told me. <laughs> he's been long enough about it, mate. Con Minard, they're very meticulous. I don't care if he's a Baptist, we've got better things to do, mate. It'll be worth it when we confront him with his skullduggery. Success! Oh, you've got it then, Mr. Tyndall. Not me, Dougal. Oh, oh yeah, Dougal. Dougal. Uh, yeah. Could we uh, see the body, Mr. Tyndall? See it? Yeah, you know, like Castor's peepers on the gruesome remains, you know what I mean? Uh, well, it's not exactly dead yet. Well, what exactly is it? Alive. Alive? Yeah, it's my fault it's still alive. I forgot to tell Dougal to kill, but don't you worry. I'll get rid of the body, and you're not to give me more money. Put this down as a fake. Hang on a minute, mate. You're saying that there's a rat in that sack. Well, what do you think it is? I'm not so sure. Put it down on the table. What? The sack. Why? Please. 
What are you going to do with that spade? I'm going to put whatever it is in there out of its misery. Oh, dear, I can't look. Hang on a minute. You don't have to look if you're squeamish. And do look and put his paw over his eyes if he doesn't want to see. It's not a rat what's in there. Well, what is it, then? A ferret. A ferret. Let's have a look. It is a ferret. Yeah. I call him Ferdy. <laughs> Hello, Ferdy. You were very nearly a pancake, then. You two have been having me on, haven't you? There wasn't no rat. And what have you been doing to us, eh? You and that moth-eating mop rag you call a dog. Couldn't catch a lame tortoise, that. Never mind a rat. He'd have caught a rat if there'd been one. He's well known for it. <laughs> Come on, Google. It's time you had your potty. Uh, aren't you forgetting something, Mr. Tyndall? What? The two quid I give you yesterday. For catching the other invisible rat. Thank you. Hmm. Oh. oh, I do hope there'll be enough of everything. Where would nobody with appetites come in? How do I know? There could be another half dozen you haven't told me about yet. Oh. <laughs> Do you think there'll be enough to drink? Well, there will be when I fill that gin bottle up with water. You can't do that. Just watch me. I'm surprised she doesn't get a sugar daddy to supply the booze. Now, Ivy. I'm sorry. I said I'd be on best behaviour tonight, Linton, and I will. I promise. No more sock at it, Mum. Good. Will you get that, Brian? Yeah, sure. Do you honestly think there'll be enough? Well, of course we will. Will you stop wittering, girl? Anyway, it's not your do, it's your mother's. Well, I feel responsible for her. Well, she's a very big responsibility, isn't she, Gail? I know. Uh, I've got a couple of guests here. Come on, let me introduce you. You know Gail, of course. Well, I should hope so. I've changed her nappies often oh, enough. Hi, hello. And okay. Gail's mum-in-law, Ivy. Yeah, hello. hello. And last but by no means least, Mr. Gail Bryan. Hello. Mm. Well, he seems to have all his muscles in the right place. Oh. She's the man-eater. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, you forgot to tell him who we are. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Come on. This is Irene Sherritt, Sandra Pilkington, two of my best mates from Waybank. All Saints, secondary modern, where we first discovered our devastating power over men! Oh. <laughs> hey, all did you know who I saw last week? Who? Stanley Green. Oh, he looked really ancient. I'm not surprised, poor soul. He aged overnight when you took him behind that bush. <laughs> oh, yeah. He lost one of his shoes, oh, remember? Yes. And his mother wouldn't let him out for a month. <laughs> Oh, yes, she's right. Now, we must reminisce, otherwise nobody will get a word in edgeways. Uh, anyway, I'm off. I'm going to Alf's thrash. Oh, Alf's the bridegroom. Oh, you're not going, are you? I was hoping to find out what Gail sees in you. Well, there's always tomorrow, love. You never know. <laughs> anyway, look, have a good time and don't wreck the joint. Sit down. Well, come on, sit down, take your coats off. Oh, Unless... very nice, Gail. Well, I think so. Unless, of course, you would like me to have a look at them... Uh... Parcels which I take are wedding presents Ooh, for me. You can wait till we've had a drink. Mm. Can't she, Sandra? Who drinks? Well, right. I hope you bought something <laughs> very, very expensive. Two gin and tonics coming up. Hey, Potter, what? you haven't watered that gin, have you? Like you usually do at your parties? What, me? As if I would. Well, round and round they go. There's no. Right now, the as the Lord High Executioner of this soiree, it is your privilege to make the draw for the King Percy's Christmas pudding. Well, I don't know about executioner, but tomorrow's going to be executed. <laughs> Shut your face, Mike, just because you never had the guts to take the plunge. Only because I know I'd drown. <laughs> Ignore him now. Close your eyes. What else is there? Work about it, that day, you know. Whoever wins, that's him for the treat. Yeah, well, I'm not particularly fond of Christmas pudding. It always gives me indigestion. That one, oh, if it is the other week. That's what I'm frightened of. What's the winning number? Yeah, I can't read it, love. It's all Chinese lettering. Oh, well. You've got it upside down, you great little The winning number is 283. Oh. There! That's me! Sit down! He's got your age! She wants to know! I'm younger at heart than you are, yeah, son! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you are, 283! Oh. There's your book! Oh, oh, eat it all at once, well you'll be thick! Yeah. <laughs> now, before you all start falling down legless, I would just like to announce that the raffle made the grand total of 42 pounds and 70 p. Right. Which I would now like to present to the friendliest of friends, Mrs. Emily Bishop. Oh, thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. And especially Mr. Sugden, who of course made the pudding. Oh, yeah. Three cheers for Mr. Sugden! Don't overdo it, what she'll do! Is it? Hey! Come on, 
and smile, oh, Percy. Yeah. It won't kill you. <laughs> Come on. I mean, put it a bit worse on that twerk. He shouldn't even be here. I bet he wasn't invited. <laughs> I'll save you a bit of pudding, Percy, if you ask me nicely. Hey, Betty! Mark! Hey, get in a bit. Oh, I don't see me supping much here. The kitty's run out, you know. Oh, it can it. Never mind, love. It's on me from now on. Okay, it's cost me a fortune as it's winning, you know. Anyway, it'll be worth it. Ah, no danger, Al. All the best for tomorrow. Oh, sorry. Hey, where are you going? I'm up up. No, no, no. Stop it now. The train. No, thanks. I'll just slipped in for a quick one. Be good. All right. You know, he should have married Ivy. It's a wonderful institution in marriage. It's great. I mean, Brian will tell you, he's married to my older little girl. Flesh of her flesh. Hey, what relationship are we then? Many fish in his will, eh, Brian? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a thought, yeah. That's if I'm going to have to leave it. Hey, get him in, Betty. Yes, I'll be. Here, I'm in a great time, you know. Here, wait till tomorrow. Not to mention tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a last. Well, that'll be the test, won't it? Whether she'll change or not. Can you honestly see her settling down as a quiet little housewife? Because I can't. I never actually saw her marrying her. Well, join the club. So shall I either settle or. Oh, what? Little be Alf will have to buy the mohair suits and the suede shoes. Well, that I'd like to see. Oh, I'm exhausted now. No wonder the way you were gyrating every lump on your body. No, it's not. Anyway, you're not going into a decline, which is something to be thankful for. Oh, yes. I don't know. There was a faint pong about in some <laughs> <laughs> Tango! Hey! Hey, you deceiving me, a fella! Hello, Mr. Atkins. Hello. He's our next door neighbour, aren't you, love it? Yes. Why, oh, you've been keeping him quiet. Popped him for a little drink, you heard it. No, sir! It was just the music. My wife finds it a little penetrating. Oh. Well, you know how sensitive she is to noise. Well, I do agree. It's a bit loud. And I was just wondering if you could turn it down a little. Just a modicum, that's you all. Tango, Ernie. Well, I used to. <laughs> Grab me. what he's letting himself in for. Well, we'll have to see in about a month's time. See if he's looking suicidal going around with a permanent grin on his face. I'm getting married in the morning. before you do out about it. <laughs> We're witnessing a very old ritual here. The man saying goodbye to his friends in his past life before he takes on the role of husband and father. He's got any sense to get on the next plane to anywhere. I'm looking forward to being married, mate. Right, it'll happen to us all and it's inevitable. Not to me it won't, pal. Not to me. <laughs> Where is it then? Hey. My Christmas pudding, I left it there where I was sat. Well, don't look at me, I don't know where it is. You haven't seen it, have you? What's that? My Christmas pudding. I haven't, no. Well, it was over there, well, I've lost it, or it's been pinched. Well, don't look at me. I bet it's that Sunday. <laughs> What's that? I'll bet you pinch my Christmas pub. I've never touched your pub. I'll bet you have. <laughs> I have not. Well, where is it then? How do I flip it? No. Well, it's vanished. How can a Christmas pub just vanish? <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
I know where his put it is. I'm sat on it. <laughs> I think my watch went wrong, is it? Calm down. Get a grip of yourself. You've got plenty of time. It's only one o'clock. Oh. oh, thank heaven for that. I'm nowhere near ready. There you are. What's that? Don't you remember? Well, should I? Nah, not really. Not unless you sit on Christmas puddings every day of the week. Oh, blimey, is that what I did? That is the pudding that Percy made that Sam won in the raffle that you sat on when you didn't know what you were doing. And me being responsible for you, go without me, put it in the boot of the jake. But it's not staying there. From now on, it is yours. Well, what do I do with it? Well, I don't know. If I wanted a couple of days of married bliss, I'd stick it in the bin and forget all about it. You reckon? Yeah. Because if Tyndall finds out, he'll mobilise the British Legion and that'll be the end of you. All oh, right, I'll, I'll chuck it at mid -in. Well, not now. We've got other things to do today, or what? have you forgotten that as well, have you? Oh, you mean getting married? Oh, well done. He remembered. Well, let's see if we can fit it in, shall we? Uh, Where did you get to? Uh, I can't find my tie. Can't find your tie? Oh. Right, well, let's see if we can, shall we? Ooh. What colour was it, eh? Uh, I don't... You're in a right... to think on my wedding day, aren't I? I must not be thinking now that I'm worrying. <laughs> worrying? You? That'll be the day. Yeah, well, the day's come now, hasn't it? Oh, go on. Do you know, it's frightening me to death. Who are you kidding? You won't be able to stop laughing. Come on, come put your dress on. Oh, I'll put my dress on in a minute. <sighs> Do you know, you'll be lucky if you get so much as a smile from me today. I'm not totally insensitive, you know. This is a momentous moment for me. What are you smirking at? Do you know, it's all right for you. You've done this before, haven't you? I mean, you've done all that wilt thou business. It's the first time for me, remember. <laughs> Ooh, talk about getting butterflies. More like flaming seagulls. Ooh. And if your own daughter can't understand how you <laughs> feel on your one and only wedding day, then who can? <laughs> Mum, got a bucket of cold water. I'm flaming hysterical down here. It's got to be one of the <laughs> Come off it. I've every right to complain, every right it will. I won that pudding fair and square and it vanished from these premises and as these premises are your responsibility... Where you know, did you leave it? For the umpteenth time over there where I was sat. Well, you shouldn't have done, should you? What did you expect me to do? Eat it hot spot? I wish you had done. All right, all right. I'll have another loop round and I'll ask a few questions and that is all you're getting. Boy, you, don't you get stoppy with Whoa. me. I'm the injured party. It was me as bought tickets and me as won raffles. And where did that get me? Up the creek without a pudding. Hey, wasn't you as took it, was it? I wasn't even here and even if I was, I don't go around pinching puddings. Excuse me. Mind you, I do make exceptions. No, only <laughs> from what I hear, it's the kind of trick you get up to. Excuse me for asking, but how many times in the average day do you get thumped? I speak my mind, there's no wrong with that. There'll be something wrong with your beak if you don't stop moaning. So you just remember, anything lost here is your responsibility. Find that pudding or there will be trouble. <laughs> and let that be a lesson, do you? Why does everybody think I am a villain? Ah, it's those macho looks of yours, Jack. I have the same trouble. <laughs> Don't know, sweetheart. Hey, hey, now give over. She's mine. Oh, sorry. Didn't know she belonged to another. Sorry. Half a lager, please. Not working this dinner time, eh? Oh, you're not doing so much yourself. Are you kidding? I'm on my own in that garage with a wedding being on. Well, we're closed. Don't open again until after the new year. Thanks, oh, sir. big old sell like yours. 90% of our customers are businessmen. Dead as a doorknob over Christmas. Mm. Might as well shut up shop. All right, for some. Hey, 
Do us a favour, will you, yeah. love? I've got Hilda outside on guard yeah. duty. She's keeping her eye out for Alf leaving. Look after the bar for me for five minutes when she tips us the wink, will you? We want to send him on his way properly dressed. Leave him alone. He's got enough misery coming. I want to give him a good send-off. I mean, he is a friend of ours, you know. Oh, if he is a friend of yours, the best thing you could do is hijack him till it all blows over. <laughs> <laughs> well said, lad. Save him from a fate worse than death. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you know, it beats me with all those examples walking the street. Why these silly devils still get married? <laughs> Oh, girl, yeah. grab your coat. Get out now, will you get in the car? Yeah. All the best, gentlemen. Yeah. Hey, yes, yeah. with a bit of luck, you man. Hang on, hang on now. There's something I want to tell you. Hang on, love. Oh, I just wanted to tell you your secrets are safe. You are. Well, I've had Sunday papers on this morning. They've offered me 30,000 quid for my memoirs. He's in no mood for joking. Who's joking? It's already written. My life a slave in councillor's love nest. Oh. But not to worry, I've turned them down. I mean, you can't sell a friend for a measly 30,000 quid now, can you? Yeah. Hey, you can meet champ. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're all like you, Vera, thank God. Come here, you, and give us a kiss. <laughs> They're going to love us at the registry office. We'll have to get the car clean then. Eh? Oi, mind your toes. See, softly on his curtains are still closed then. <laughs> I'm not surprised Katie was in. Is that right? You got Kale like nowhere else last night. Hey, lad, <laughs> if you could have seen him, Brian, Satanyar said he was Irene on one side and Sandra on the other. What was that song he was singing? <laughs> I didn't tell him. And that one of you had the sense to pick up a camera and take a few shots of him. We could have blackmailed him for the rest of his natural. Hey, we could, couldn't we? <laughs> couldn't we have him in the car, please? The bride in front, I think, so she don't get a dress all my story. Well, I'm the bride. Oh, sorry, love. I should think someone else. Here we go. Mind the hat. Oh. Man, what? Can we go past the cafe? What for? I just want to make sure everything's all right. Oh, don't be daft, love. we will be well taken care of. It's not Nicky I'm worried about. It's Phyllis and Martin. I'm worried about them pooping. Let's her have her own way, Brian. She's in a bad enough state as it is without making it worse. You know where it is, Livy. Next to the cabin on Rosamond Street. Yeah, I know it. Well, we'll stop there, then. And if they're in a mess, we'll give them hand with the washing up. <laughs> now, come on! Let's be having you. What's your um, uh, A rose between two forms. Hey, <laughs> Should we tell him what we was talking about in the garden? Oh. <laughs> well, Go on. on. It's busy this time of year, I imagine. Hi, yeah, I bet you Hello. You get a lot of fellas after you. <laughs> Not those who want, Tilda. Don't you get nobody proposing? Propositioning, not proposing. Oh, it's funny that, because you're not a bad-looking girl. Thanks. Doesn't seem to do me much good. Oh, never you mind, love. Mr. Wright will come along, you'll see. Well, you can stop waiting. He's all right. Hey, hey. Oh, and Betty. What? Don't worry yourself about the drinks. I'll see to the uncorking and serving. You can leave all that to me. I was going to. Well, I just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> You can't be sure of anything these days, can you? No. Five more minutes, and another poor soul goes to the devil. That's right, yes. Yeah. So nobody else turned up? Well, two fellas just went in. One on the fat side, the other one smaller. A bit fanciful. Oh, just because he smiled at you. Well, they don't <laughs> all, do they? Yes, uh, that sounds like them. 
Hey, which one's she marrying? Well, I won't spoil the surprise. I'll let you find out for yourselves. If she turns up. Hey, that skinny ape will have six butcher's shops. That's what I'm saying. As long as he's got plenty in the bank, who cares? You can always find yourself a square fella. But you try getting your hands on spare cash. Come on, everybody, now smart. Get your pictures in the police gazette. <laughs> Are you sure you want to take them here? I usually do it at the reception in the hotel grounds. Well, you can if you want, love. It didn't mean shifting the dustbin. <laughs> Solemn occasion or not, look as if you're enjoying yourselves. Very good, Norman. All right, Dave. Congratulations, Ralph. And every helping of God. God help you, love. I know what you've got coming to you, having lived with him. Don't worry, he told me all about it. Alf, come here. Come on, stand here and receive you again. Oh, we've done all that. Just give him a drink. Right, Frank, dish it out. All right, oh, there we go. All ready. Thank you, Lord. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any chance of a fight? Go on, silly, if I get one for you. Go on, get one. Of course you can, don't say all that I want, eh? Right, what are we having? You wouldn't believe it, would you? In 20 years' time, when I'm telling all my mates about my wedding day, I say we came out of the registry office and he couldn't wait. What for? They'll say, and I'll tell them. Yes, later sandwiches and a flipping. It makes you hungry. Having a wedding. Actually, yeah. do you know? I think you're right. I'm starving. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh, you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a little bit of ladies and gentlemen? Can I have a little bit of hush, please? Come on, now, they never get oh, no tell. Do you want to give me that Christmas bonus, back? Ha, <laughs> yes, thanks very much, Mr. Baldwin. Eight hundred uh, quid each. I thought it'd gone mad. <laughs> one way or another. I'm sorry about the commercial, ladies and gentlemen, but I just thought that we get. Uh, but before you get uh, too happy, the uh, speech is over and done right. without the way, all right? Oh, speak to me! Is that all you want? Oh, promises, promises! <laughs> hey, hey, come on, give the poor cow a chance! I am doing my best, I just want to say this. We have known Alf for many years now, yeah. and he has served us uh, both on the council and a provider of life's necessities for... Uh, <laughs> Is that where you buy your scotch from? For many years now. She starts out again. Chuck her out, will you? <laughs> now, turn it to Audrey. That is a different kettle of fish. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. thank you very much. What well, Audrey lacks amongst us in years, she more than makes up for in personality. Yeah. Yeah. Now, she is a very easy lady to know. Oh. Oh, all right, OK, OK, to know and like. Oh. Now, I have the pleasure of her company on very rare occasions, and I think I know her very well. Oh. 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 Don't worry, love. Nothing happened. She never asked you. <laughs> Not you. I'm going to hide into nothing here. I just want to say one more thing, right? Uh, and uh, we are only here because of an accident. And this is a model for those ladies of you, you that uh, think you're hard done by. Because we wouldn't have been here because Audrey crashed the car and Alf lost his license for life. <laughs> so the toast is, ladies and gentlemen, to Audrey and Alf. Cheers, oh, Audrey and Alf. Okay, and Alf. Remembering how Rini died, he might have chosen his words a little more carefully. Yeah, he might. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my wife and myself, I'd just like to thank you for all the lovely presents and for being here with us this afternoon. I'd like to thank Mike for 
for his support and for getting me there on time. It wasn't easy. <laughs> and, and Vet and the Merry Men for this marvellous spread. You're thank welcome. you very much. But most of all, I would like to thank Audrey for having me. Oh. I'm a very happy man. Oh. Thank you very much. Give or it's open house, isn't it? Not till half past six, it's not. Hilda, to chat, though, everywhere is open house all the time. Don't you try coming that in my house. Yeah. Yeah. Better than a punch-up, maybe. It's better than a punch-up. Much nicer. What do you um, think? Yes. Oh, it's lovely. One of the teachers at our school's got one of them. Only, it's got a bow at the back. Oh, come on, Miss Bow at the back. Let's see if you get ready. Hello. 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 Are you ready yet? I've only just got in. Yeah. I took some time off this afternoon, but everything's done. And it's all set at the printers. Good, good. Well, come on, then. We're crying out for a bell of the ball. <laughs> And you will get me shot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Have a nice time, gentlemen. Hello, Phyllis, my Hello, love. Hello, love. Hello. I'm your own then, are you? Well, I was till you came in. <laughs> Do you make habit of sitting at other folks' tables? There's an old pronoun, what you may not have heard of. There's safety in numbers. Pronoun? Pronoun. Proverb, you flipping ignoramus. Pronoun, proverb, what's the odds? Well, while we're on the subject, there's a pronoun that I'm particularly fond of. Yeah. Two's company, three's a crowd. I'm better fond of that one than all. Are you? I'll be doing you a favour then, won't I? Now we can have a nice peaceful chat on his own. There's a proverb that my mother was always using. Oh, yeah. Speech is silver, silence is golden. I'll leave you to it. Great, that's great. 
What could you do with somebody behind that bar? Oh, Betty's not dancing. No. And neither are you. Off you go, Gloria. It's all pleasant watching, isn't it? Hey, sir. <laughs> You've got the cheek of the devil, you women. Walk straight up to me as I can have this done. She wouldn't believe it, would you? No. Oh, now don't start, Bernie. You promised me. Well, dance with me then. But I've got a bad leg, haven't I? Well, you didn't have a bad leg when you were dancing with that Charlotte, did you? Come on. Show him the help. Where are you going? Four days in Paris, all oh, Anna! <laughs> Keep it in, sir. See you. I'll be out. I'll have some in Ted. Part time job, and I got you into that wine bar in London. That's right. I never found out. I mean, were you happy? Did you like it? It was great while well, it lasted. I don't think it went down too well with your father, though, did it? You know what dads are like with their kids. Oh, you wouldn't, would you? <laughs> don't worry. She's a sensible girl. knives and forks. No, give everybody two of each. Oh, I see. So we're having two dinners, are we? And you've got a spare knife in case the other one goes blunt. <laughs> no, a knife and fork for the first course and a knife and fork for the main course. Put the small ones on the outside. Oh, yeah, I knew that all the time. I was just testing you. What's for the uh, first course? I've worked out it isn't soup. It's ham with melon. Come again. It's a kind of Italian ham. It's cured in a different way, and I hope you like it because it's very dear. That's all right. I thought I was going daft for a minute. I thought it said ham and melon. Yes, that's right. Well, where did you get that one from? Oh, I don't know. It's a, it's a thing. You see, every so often I get a desperate urge to try something different for once. Yeah, but melons is for afters. You can't have ham and melon. Someone's pulling your leg. You'll find it very nice. Well, you might convince me, but I don't think you'll convince Percy. I mean, I'm young and adaptable and, and well daft, but Percy, he's set in his ways. He'll probably get up and go. <laughs> does he know that Phyllis is coming? Well... He doesn't, does he? Oh, great. Well, I gave him a time half an hour earlier than her, so with a bit of luck and a couple of glasses of sherry, he might be in a sort of mellow frame of mind. With a bit of luck, he'll get the hump and he'll go home. That's not the Christmas spirit. Oh, I'm glad, Kate. Thought they disowned you somehow. Well, I said that, didn't I? I said, if you're on your own, you're very welcome to come and get outside some of our turkey. I thought you'd be welcome. You did, Jack. You did. Yeah, Ben. How is he, Ad? That's very nice. Listen, I don't have to be half cut to give us some sort of hospitality, you know. Listen, if you want half cut more, sit down, put my pick you up on it more. You never miss a dig, do you? Even in the trenches, they have a truce at Christmas. Oh, oh, right. our house, though. Well, seeing as it's Christmas, I'll let you buy me a drink. If you're having it so shy to go in your pocket, I'll <laughs> Wait a minute, Gloria, love. Right, 
No, I thought if it were me, you know, I'd rather do things myself, wouldn't you? I mean, because you do them faster, don't you? I mean, and there's people saying, can I help you? Can I give you hand? Well, you could have them drunk, couldn't you? But you can't say, can you? And on the other hand, I thought, well, I'll not be able to sit there and see her struggling, so I thought it best if I... Yeah, you oh, know, you did right, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. And a pale, pale ale for the missus. Hey, what do you mean, pale ale? Oh, it's Christmas, have you heard him? I'll have a sherry, a large one, and don't forget either. Oh, not for me, love, I've got to sell him for one. After all you've said to him in here, you are trying to get me legless for her. I'm going visiting. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I am sorry. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. What have I done? Chuck. If you were to go down the cellar steps with a face like that on, you'd turn the ale. I can't risk it. Come on, it's Christmas. And what's Christmas without a Christmas pudding, eh? Have you still not found that pudding? No, I have not. Well, all right. But you can't let it ruin everything else for you. It grieved him, it did. It grieved him, that sog done. And now, see, the cup has been dashed from my lips. Or in this case, pudding. I was wrong. What about? I think you do enjoy being miserable. Well, all right, Sam. I hope that you have a rotten, miserable Christmas. And all the best to you. And here's wishing you all you wish yourself. Turkey's done. Flipping neck, it's done bit time it took. It's been in and out of that oven more times, but you can't be so careful with frozen. <laughs> well, it's getting on now, though, isn't it, Turkey? I mean, at one time it used to be a big thing, but now it's... Yeah, well, I don't about your kid, but we didn't have it every day in our house, did we? Well, I'm not saying that, Vera. It's just, it's... They're advertising something more for every day, well, like. it's going the same way as chicken, isn't it? I mean, you remember, right? Chicken. Ah, well, Jack, now you're talking chicken. I mean, chicken what chicken, but wasn't you it? you never see it, so it, did you? Yeah, but it was a big thing in them days. I mean, them chicken with chicken and turkey with flipping oh, turkey. Oh, wait, wait, turkey. Now, that was some hell. Yeah, but I mean, today, I mean, chicken. Just chicken. But that's what I was saying, Jack. I mean, turkey's going the same way, isn't it? I mean, now, turkey is just turkey. It's that blooming booty full of lunatic from nothing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's only one thing that tells you it's Christmas now, isn't there? What's that? Your bonus that you get in your packet. Oh, <laughs> hey, kid, that were a bit of all that. Yeah. Wasn't it? hundred quid? <laughs> <laughs> to tell him how much. hundred nickel? Well, get him in, I will believe it's well, Christmas. Well, that's it now. Oh. Is it the lost cord you're looking for? No, I'm looking for my Christmas pudding. In the piano? Yeah, I reckon it was that Sugden. He couldn't swallow the thought of it, me having his precious pudding. Catering core. Well, I don't think anyone had died it in a piano. There's no telling what they'll do. Uh, ah! Good girl. I've just come to fetch those. Well, I've got them. And I'll tell you something else now, and not just because it's Christmas, but it's very much appreciated around here. Don't think it isn't. I mean, the way you do your job. Well, thanks. All right, that's the only way it's due. And what are you doing with old Sam in here, anyway? <laughs> Getting you under the mistletoe? Was he, Eck? <laughs> well, if he wasn't, I will. What are you hanging around here for? Go on. They're busy in there. Oh, oh, I can just get my penny off and have a quiet sherry. That would be very nice. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, it's that unearthly calm and before the, uh, what's it in it? Before the clash and tumult of battle, you mean? I do hope not. Hmm. <laughs> It's nice, though, this sherry. Is it strong? It tastes it. I think it is quite. They put brandy in it, don't they? It's called fortified. Oh, that's definitely what we need, fortifying. Well, I do wish you wouldn't. I've been slaving in there and we're going to have a nice dinner. I'll get it. I bet he's brought his ukulele. Oh, hello, hello. How much for the planet, Phyllis? Oh, Phyllis. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> I've come a bit early. I thought I might be able to give you a hand. Oh. Well, there's plenty to do, isn't there? <laughs> I brought you a little present. Oh, you shouldn't. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, 
There's only bath salts and a bit of talcum powder. Well, you should have played to last year. That's what I got her. Oh, oh very well. nice. Thank you. To be honest, I think I've just about got enough. Uh, Sissy brought me some, that's her next door. Oh, yes. Then uh, Gail gave me some, and two yes. customers out at cafe. Yes. Very nice of them. Yes. They come in regular, they're from transport. And I always look after them, right, to give them a few extra beans, you know. Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> here's some more to add to the collection. Oh, <laughs> and here's me. Tar very much. You can't have enough of a good thing, can you? You promise me absolutely faithfully that you don't play Monopoly. <laughs> I make my living buying and selling. It's not my idea of relaxation. It goes on forever. And it's all been carefully put away so we can carry on after dinner. I mean, I like Tracy very much, but... Oh. Well, it's Christmas, isn't it? There you are in the bosom of your family. You should think yourself lucky. I suppose so. What are you doing for your Christmas dinner? Me? I'm going to a hotel in town, uh, the Cavendish. Do you know it? Mm, it's very pricey, isn't it? Well, it's all right for people like us who've got nowhere to go. Aww. And they do the washing up. And I bet they don't play Monopoly either. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what. If things get too rough, why don't you uh, pop round for a brandy? I was going to suggest that. Well, it's a good idea, but... Uh, I don't think it'll go down too well with the family. Why not? Well, it's, it's Christmas, isn't it? I should expect they'd be glad to see the back of me for an hour or two. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, if you turn up and I won't expect you to, well, that would really be very nice. He has, he's brought it. Merry Christmas. Mr. Merry Christmas. Yes, we were just discussing whether you'd bring your ukulele. Oh, I will let you down on that one. You know what they say, don't they? There's many good tunes played on an old ukulele. I'll just tune it up, let it get used to the room. You know, they don't like being shifted. It's the temperature, you know. No, I don't, don't please. Uh, oh, there's four of us. Are we expecting all this? Uh, yes. I'm just making the gravy. And you're quite right. There's many a good tune played on an old ukulele. Uh, well, that's knackered this one. Merry Christmas. I thought you two were having your dinner together. Oh, yes, we are. Yes. You don't mind me saying so. I mean, who's doing the cooking or are you having a balm cake? Oh, no, no. We're having a bit of smoked salmon to start with, aren't we, Mary? Oh. Yes. Well, that was my contribution, because, well, it doesn't need any cooking, does it? I mean, you just have it with lemon juice and brown bread. I know it's dear, but yeah. there's no waste, is there? Well, no, I suppose you could say that the same for caviar. Next year. <laughs> oh. No, then we're going to have a nice piece of beef. Because when you're on your own, you don't want to keep looking at a big fat oh, turkey no. fridge for days, do you? No. So, I did the beef this morning, because you get a better flavour mm. with a bit of standing, don't you? And you don't want cold meat for your Christmas you dinner, do you? Oh, no, we could win the microwave. Oh, when is it going to be piping hot? Same with the veg, same with the pudding. Oh, you've gone in for a microwave, have you? Yeah, she's trying to persuade me to have one. Oh, Betty, they're very good if you're yeah. on your own. Oh, well, that's what I don't like about them. I mean, well, they're modern equivalent to a gas ring, aren't they? A gas ring? The way her mind works. No, then we'll have our dinner out of the microwave. Yeah. We'll record the Queen's speech on the video. And if we could only find another machine to eat it all for, we wouldn't have to go. <laughs> Right, well, it's all ready, as soon as you like. Right, old Mrs. O? Oh, you know, I could just hear Eddie the way you said that. What he would have said, Webster, is what you have in Mrs. O, as soon as she's been slaving over your dinner. All right, Mrs. O. Well, I think I could force a drop of sherry down. You can have it on me, Elder, and call it your Christmas bonus. Oh, right, well, uh, I'll have a large one, then. And it's that sherry Mrs. Walker used to like. Go on, then, seems it's only once a year. It's not on the slide, this brandy butter. You are? But the brandy butter, the Christmas pud. Wonderful. Oh, you can have me out here. Well, if you like. But wait till we're closed, eh? <laughs> I was talking about your cooking. You know, by the way. Well, I could turn my hand almost yeah. anything. Yeah. You can have me out here. You've had enough. And may I wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. And the compliments of the season. To and you all. Oh, yes. 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 Cheers, lovely. Cheers. It's nice to be waited on. <laughs> well, it makes a change for you, doesn't it? Mind you, this makes a change and all. What exactly is it? Is it big? Now what? Well, it's, uh... Well, it's, uh... Oh, yuck. It's Italian ham, Mr. Sugden. I know what it is, lad. I'm just trying to remember what they call it. It'll come in a minute. Uh, prosciutto. Oh, what 
think that's what they do call it. Uh. You've had it before? Had it? I feasted on it, feasted. Oh, yeah, where? I drove a field kitchen the length of flipping Italy, liberating and liberating a lot of this stuff and all, I could tell you, wonderful stuff. Food for the gods. Oh, well, I'm glad I've pleased you. Mm. All right, Phyllis. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, if it's Italian, I'm glad I put my holiday teeth in. <laughs> hey, good one, Phyllis. <laughs> you don't need teeth for this. It melts on your tongue. E prosciutto. You know, you know it must be wonderful knowing everything. <sighs> Mind you, it's not bad, Mrs. Bishop. Well, it seems to do the trick. Draw, Merry Christmas. Well, well, <laughs> See you. All the best. <laughs> Nicely timed. Just about ready to pop this bumanti in there. Oh, that's the best suggestion of her today. Well, I said the best anyway. Oh, what's the best? <laughs> well, you know what they say. The best is yet to come. Oh, let's hope, eh? Mm. Where's Beth? Oh, she's uh, just gone down the road with Rita and Mavis. Don't know what for. Said she wouldn't be long. <laughs> Muggins here left to clear up. Cinderella me. <laughs> Come on, don't kid yourself. Oh, I'm not moaning. Well, get me dinner, aren't I? I meant what I said, you know. There's people around here think a lot of you. Well, <laughs> there's certainly me. Well, as I said, Thanks very much. I mean, it, it wasn't just an excuse to get you another mistletoe. <laughs> Glad to hear it. And just to prove it, I'm very happy to do it all over again. Without the mistletoe coming into it. See? No mistletoe. Frank. Frank, please stop it. <laughs> it's anything in a skirt with you, isn't it? You know, you just have no idea how attractive you are, do you? Well, you wouldn't say that. I'm not going to kiss you. Now, will you let me go? Look, Beth will be here any minute. Well, don't you think about that? I would never do anything to hurt Beth. <sighs> you just like living dangerously, don't you? Yeah, well, maybe you're right. We could choose a better time. What do you mean, we? You know damn well what I mean. Don't tell me you don't fancy it. I can tell the difference between a mistletoe kiss and the real thing any time. Tracy, do you want to go and find your daddy's hammer? What for? So your mummy can smash that thing you're blowing. Or you could just stop blowing it if you like. What a good idea. <laughs> Oh, all right, then, if you'll get all the stuff out. Well, I think you can split my property between you, because I'm going out. Oh, where are you going? So they go and have a drink with somebody. I think all the pubs are shut yet, aren't they, Ken? Yeah, well shut. No, he's had his dinner at a hotel, so I said I'd go along afterwards and be sociable. Oh, who's this, then? Well, from over the road, Mike Baldwin. So if it's OK with you, count me out of the Monopoly. Where are you meeting him? The Cavendish. And how are you getting there? Well, can I borrow the car? No. Well, you'll be drinking. Well, I'll ring for a taxi then. You hardly know the man. We were dancing at that wedding, do. Yes, we noticed. You don't mind, who you? Well, for one thing, I think he's a bit old for you. I'm not thinking of marrying him. Tracy, I'll uh, help you with that, love. I can do it. Do I get the idea you don't particularly like him? I mean, I can understand, with your politics and his. I mean, I expect he's pretty fascist. But he's interesting company. I won't bring him home, I promise. Another glass of the port, Mr. Sugden. Well, I wouldn't say no. I think they'd all say the same to that. I know it's supposed to go round the table a particular way, but I can never remember which it is. Who cares, as long as it gets here. You can remember. It, it, it's right is right. It must be wonderful knowing everything. Well, it's not your fault, you know, now, lad. You haven't been around as long as I have. You've never waited on its officer's mess, have you? Can't say I have. And I paid for my education fighting the war for it. Oh, count yourself lucky. I don't see what it matters or which way it goes round. 
But you see, it's got to go that road, because if you pass on going left, you're in danger knocking your glass over, aren't you? Well, with your price, it's vintage, you don't want that, do you? I mean, uh, you pour and pass with that on you, that road, you see. Uh, etiquette. Uh, it's only another word for common sense. Particularly, particularly when you've had a few. He's a scholar, isn't he? That's what they say is down at Legion's Club. <laughs> the Professor, that's what they call him. <laughs> I'll get it. Well, well, there's a lot of scallywags and witch down at Legion. Hey, they'll have an extension New Year's Eve there. So I believe. Oh, are you doing anything New Year's Eve? Well, I don't know, I might be. Well, <laughs> there you are. There's the Legion. You can both go. Mm -hmm. a, a visitor. I won't be a minute. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to toast to absent friends. Oh, um, Mr. Tindall, Merry Christmas. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had a good dinner, did you? Ah, we have a right good dinner, haven't we? Eh, <laughs> Mr. Bishop's done us proud. Mm. Mm. Have a nice Christmas, poor have you? Oh, I had up a grand. Mm. More than some of us. Well, he should have looked after it better. That pudding was stolen by somebody. Well, it was somebody who knew a good pudding because that was a good pudding. Mm. A lot went into that pudding. Mm. Well, I know bloke what thought most highly of it. Who? The bloke has made it. You're not saying I'll pinch it back off you. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not going to let a Christmas pudding upset me Christmas. Well, it upsets me. I put a lot of time and effort into that pudding. Mm. Mm, well, I, <coughs> I don't want to talk about it. At all mm. very much, Mrs. But yeah. oh. What did you come for, then? I invited him to drop in, Mr. Sugden. You should have known better. <laughs> you two, will you stop it? The only time you're up here, you two, is when you're knocking cobs off each other. Ooh. Lovely dinner, Mrs. Bishop, lovely. But me, I'm leading a retreat. The Queen's own battalion of innocent bystanders is withdrawing to prepared positions in the pub. Yes, I may join you before very long. Then I'll open yet. You can stand outside and wait. It's only an hour or two. See ya. Do either of you want a bit of tea or something? No. No, no, I've eaten enough for a week. Let me in Well, if you do. I'd just like to know what he thinks he's playing at, that's all. All oh, right. Maybe you should have just told her flat she couldn't go. And told her why, I suppose. Damn good mind to go down to that hotel. Oh, come on, Ken, you can't do that. Then you really would have Yes, to... I know, but it's how I feel. You realise you've probably got a room booked down there. Oh, Ken, you... You just jump into all sorts of conclusions. Yes, well, I would, wouldn't I? I know him. And so do you, remember? That's not very fair. No. I'm sorry. Well, here we are, Christmas again. It's been a funny kind of a year, hasn't it? Yeah, one way and another. It's funny the way things work out. I bet you've given up hope, haven't you? What do you mean? Well, have ever getting your man married off. Oh, yes, it's funny how things work out. Yes, it is, isn't it? Mind you, you've come close. Closer than I think I'll ever come. Uh, did it turn out all right in any turkey, Vera? Aye, hey, I think there's something wrong with my stove, you know. It doesn't eat up properly. I don't know what he's looking at, Arthur, cos he's got the same trouble. Oh, sure. <coughs> yeah, I bet you've given up hope, haven't you? You've just said that, Hilda. Mind you, I'm sure they'll be very happy, you know, cos, you see, for one thing, they've got good neighbours. Now, you do want neighbours what take an interest, don't you? Well, we've got at least one of them. Oh, more than that. No, no, they're all all right round here. Well, I mean, look at you. You keep coming back, you. don't you? You're here now. I can't think why. Because there's not the same friendliness on them estates. And you know why it is? Uh, no, Hilda. Gardens. Oh, yes, now, it's all very fine having a garden. But you see, here, you've got to go out on your staff if it's only to put your milk bottles out. So you keep bumping into them. But if you've got a garden, well, you're cut off, aren't you? No, you want to move back round here, that's what you want to do. No, I don't know, Hilda. I think I could get quite keen on gardening. Frank! You don't do it! No tree oh, here! Oh, well, yeah. Oi, 
got no license for that. You don't need a license for singing. Oh, singing! Sorry. I thought you were slaughtering a horse. Oh, see, that's the trouble with this country. There's no what's it, is it? I mean, abroad. You'd have the castanets out. Hey, and listen, I'll tell you what's all right for you, lot. You know, I have to go home with him. Hey, here's my big lad. He'll buy us a drink, won't you? You've had enough already, you. You take after there, Tommy, you. He was tight fisted, bought us a milk jug for a wedding present. Flaming milk jug. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I'm just coming to find you. See if you fancy a turn on deck. Why? Are they going a bit off at sea? Oh, no, they're fine. Jack's in good form, but nothing we can't handle. You probably don't need me, then. <laughs> now you know better than that. Yes, Rita. Is this just the Christmas spirit? I should got this one. I was broke. I wouldn't know, love. I really wouldn't know. Same again, anyway. We are talking about this, are we? Are you not deaf? I nearly froze to death on that doorstep. Well, come here. I'll rub your legs for you. Is Bet not up or something? Uh, she's in the bath, smothering herself with face cream, searching for the secret of eternal youth. Think she can buy them boots? Well, by right, she should have that door off the latch when it's parky like this. Well, she usually does. Well, she didn't this morning. You want to be careful. How do you mean? Telling fibs. You've got a long nose, like Pinocchio. Don't know what you're on about. And it's too cold to stand out here listening to riddles. Then come under my sweater and get some of my body heat. Forget it, Frank. I'm not risking my job over you. We'll see. Don't think we could hide that record player, do you? I mean, there was a time when children were supposed to be seen and not heard. These days, with Tracy, it seems to be totally the reverse. Yeah, well, Queen Victoria has died, you know. Yeah, I know, poor thing. Just think, she missed the sex pistols. Bring back Herman and his hermit. Buy all you need is a stiff collar and a pair of mutton chop oh, whiskers. Come on, love. You've got to admit, it's a bit of a racket first thing. I don't know how Susan sleeps through it. Well, you managed uh, half an hour more than I did, and a full hour more than she did. She was out of the office long since. Oh! Oh, well, she's holding the fort. I can stretch breakfast a bit. Might even manage two rounds of toast. Oh, I'll ring for the maid. How's the Crimean War doing, then? OK. I must admit, I do feel a bit twitchy this morning. I mean, Christmas so far has had its little upsets, hasn't it? Look, if you're talking about Susan getting herself chattered up, shall we say, then I think it was Summerton now. Or maybe, as far as Susan's concerned, but don't tell me he didn't know he was being provocative. <laughs> exactly. He was stirring the pot. I think that's how Baldwin gets his kicks, to be honest. Yeah, I think you're dead right. Right. So we've got to be as laid back as he thinks he is. Just let it blow over, because it will. In fact, I'm pretty sure it already has. I believe you. I mean, no sooner had I kicked his car headlights in than I thought, Kenneth, you're taking this too far. Oh, absolutely. I'd have let his tyres down. Yeah. What about pinching his stilts? Now, that's unkind. <laughs> Baldwin's residence. Hello. Could I speak to Mr. Baldwin, please? Uh, would you hold the line, please? I'll just check his availability. My availability's fine, you <laughs> Hello, my Baldwin. It's Susan. Oh, hi. The girl with sunshine in her voice. Flannelly. No, I'm glad you rang. Uh, I thought, well, I'll give it a half past ten. And then what? Well, then if you hadn't phoned... Um... Curtains. Curtains? No. No, I mean, it'll be the desperate note, the uh, tapping on the windows at night, the... Uh... Hang on a minute, love. Thank you, Elder. Come on, shoot, shoot. If that girl's got a father, he wants warning. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was my daily doing a bit of ear-wigging. Your daily what? Uh, my Swedish au pair. Came with the most marvellous references from Hurricane Higgins. <laughs> 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 Look, uh, I've got to pop in at the factory, but... Uh... Well, what about me to me a bit later for lunch? Great. You, um, found him from home, are you? No. I'm at the recorder office. Oh. Dad dragged you in, did he? Yeah, the lazy so-and-so. He hasn't shown his face yet. <laughs> well, look, um, I could pick you up, but, I mean, uh, 
If you prefer to meet me... Uh... I'll meet you. Oh, right. Well, I know this uh, little Italian restaurant in Peter Street. They do the most fantastic pizzas. Totally authentic. Everything's flown in from Naples. Now, I'm talking about the waiters. <laughs> the pizzas come from this old black pudding factory. <laughs> You'll be lucky. He's on his honeymoon. Well, I know that. I just thought they might have come back. Back? What's that order? He's got him in Gay Parry. He'll not be back till she's skinned him. No danger. What's this? A queue? Welcome committee? Or are you two dating? Oh, wish you'd give over. I just want some groceries. Well, it's groceries you wanted. You can get everything cheaper down Morsley Street. Hang about. They back out. They newly weds. I heard them last night. From three doors away. Well, don't tell me you didn't. All the squeaking and groaning and doors banging and... That was just a taxi. <laughs> well, I never heard a thing of having used to guarding rations in defeated countries when they shoot you for a packet of lard. Actong, actong, stand by your bets. First one up gets the clean comes. Oh, fine. Mm. Yeah. Meeting? What meeting? Housing committee. Tom, you do realise that I'm still on my honeymoon? Mm. Uh, yeah, I know the committee's trying to push the office development through. I know it's a backdoor job. Tom, I am on my honeymoon! Yeah. Yeah, well, it's very sad when you start losing your memory. Listen, I will try and make the meeting, but if I don't, don't worry, I won't be there. ta -ra, Tom. <sighs> We're shot! Heavens, the murderer! What's to do? The Russians landed us from the door. Toilet rolls! Oh, well, if he is a Russian, he's got very nice taste. Yeah. Can you show him around the back, please? <laughs> Toilet rolls. We're home with a vengeance, aren't we? Oh, I suppose I better see if back gates open. Oh, come on, we'll manage. Oh, right, you've talked me out a bit. What's my orders then, Commodore? I'll tell you when we're back in bed. Oh, no, don't tell me. Uh, clear the freezer and. Uh, Tidy the stock room and... Uh... Get up them stairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, sure, you're playing a blinder. Yeah. Look, I've got some book work, so if you could just stick around, give Gloria a lift. Sure. I'm OK. I mean, it's dead here. Oh. <laughs> I'll save in the brass for tomorrow. Oh, you'll be in, will you, and the other lads? I oh, will be here for starters, I reckon. I'll get you on, Mrs. O. Oh, Tom, very much don't mind if I do. Lights out, please, love. Have you got anything planned for the new year, Hilda? Well, I'll be glad to see the back of the old one. It's not fetch me much luck. Oh, it fetch you this young gentleman. Oh, oh, well, yeah, that's one to chalk up. <laughs> mind you, 1985 wasn't let in proper. So think on, Chuck. I want you there with your lump of coal. Fits the bill to a T, doesn't it? Dark, handsome. Oh, can I have that in writing? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me something, blue eyes. Well, these bits of kids turn you on? Well, I'm hardly Methuselah myself, am I? My theory is you feel more in control. You don't say? Sure. Like when I make a move, you start sort of trembling. Well, you're a dangerous man, aren't you? Oh, I'm dynamite. Look, I've told you. Just stop mucking about. I won't risk my job and I won't do the dirty on bet. In which order? Does it matter? Sure. If it's a contest, your principles against my sex appeal. <laughs> you're talking rubbish. Now, for the last time, there's nothing doing. So keep your hands to yourself. Right. I'll just see if I can find this bump for I want, and I'll make us some coffee. I'll do that if you like. All right, through there. Just put the perk on that. Right. Well, hang on, hang on. No, these are the papers. Right, well, I'll do the necessary. You can uh, test the casting couch, eh? But well, watch it, that's been known to squeak. So this is where you do your interviews then, is it? Yeah, that's right. This flat's in the procession of the world's most glamorous machinists. I uh, whip them down to the wages, I wine them, I dine them, I feed them the cream of my charm, I dazzle them with my wit, then Mickey Finn in their coffee and psh, off to Hong Kong. Slaves to some millionaire shirt manufacturer. Sounds great. So how do you like your Mickey Finns then? Black and no sugar. Right. Do you know you're corrupting me? 
Meetings in wimpy bars just aren't going to be the same. And as for your chat, well, if you bottled it and bought yourself a barrack... You've got to be joking. You wouldn't even find this in Harrods. It's a very rare product. At its best, when stimulated by a young and beautiful woman. Uh, now you're playing your experience card. That could turn you into a father figure. You are old enough to qualify, I expect. I'm old enough to be a father, you're old enough to be a mother, so uh, what are you doing next week? I'm not thinking of getting involved with the birth rate. Oh. Could have a quick read of Lolita. Anyway, what's all this next week rubbish? What about tomorrow? Isn't it to be hands together into the promise of the new year? Oh, uh, no, I, I don't think I could swing that. Oh, you've made other arrangements? Well, yeah, sort of. You see, this pal gives the most marvellous parties. I mean, you could come like a shot, but... Well, it's... It's in London. Oh, London? Hmm. Oh, well, there would be the language problem. And my passport isn't stamped. No. No, you don't understand. Uh, you see, um, well, it means staying overnight. So? So? Do you think your father would wear that? Oh, you're inviting the family. <laughs> no, but, uh, well, you know what I mean. Does my dad have to know? I mean, I've hardly lived with him ten minutes. There's no way I feel obliged to take it out with him. Well, it's... It's just that I didn't want to tread on any sensitive toes. OK, so you're not some clean-cut young executive with 55 O-levels. But he knows I see you, and he's mentioned the age difference. So, I don't think he's going to turn neurotic about it. It's not my dad's style. And besides that, apart from something totally nutty, I can't see any sane reason for him kicking up a fuss. <laughs> Where's your mum? She's gone to for some wool to finish me jumper. Will you be a little angel? Will you go and get us a nice clean towel? Oh, and I think there's a pair of me tights in the dryer. Could you get them for us as well? Hello, love. You're back soon. Can not with you. I haven't seen him since I got back from lunch. He just rang. He's gone to the printers. It'll be a bit late. Oh, that'll mean a long face if they're talking money. If you could get those things, Trace, I'll be in the bath. Why are you going out tonight? Well, um, tomorrow night, actually. I've decided to spend New Year in Newcastle. Oh, I see. It must be a bit of a bombshell. But you see, Tim rang. You remember Tim, that lad who dropped me off. Oh, uh, Tim, yes. Well, he rang me at the recorder office not an hour ago and said they were planning this big get-together. And if I had nothing special on, they'd love to see me. So I thought if I went up tonight and came back on New Year's Day, you've no need to worry about me. I've got somewhere fixed and everything. I'd better rush if I'm going to get to the station on time. Will you explain to Dad for me? Trace, if you could get those things. Well, I'll tell you something. I think that's dead slice. She can find her own tights. We don't have time to unpack yet, but one thing another. Hey, decent love, yeah. only, uh, your girl's popped round. Ah! <laughs> 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 I bet you thought we'd join the foreign legion. Hey, we did apply, you know, but they won't take couples. <laughs> John, show me. Oh, bloody hell, it's a snack up. Any Don't panic, Percy. Any it's only us chickens. Yeah, yeah, it's a wonder he didn't come bursting in here. A near respectable marriage woman in a petticoat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like your boudoir. Mm. Is this your headquarters? Well, I must say, I'm much happier here than I would be in the kitchen. <laughs> when did you get back? Who counts the days? Early this morning, actually. Well, what have you been doing since then? It's a bit of a daft question, isn't it? <laughs> now, somewhere here, there are presses for absolutely everybody. Oh. Hey, these will do for me. No, just keep your hands off them, grabber. Huh? No, this is for Brian. Oh, that? Huh? Oh, have a whiff of this. Real Paris. Mm. It's no wonder the door's locked, because if Percy got a whiff of this, there'd be no holding him. <laughs> I take it you had a nice time, then? Fabulous. And are you adjusted to married life? Let's see. So far, so good. Mm? Oh, have a gander at these. <laughs> This is me and a sailor. Oh. We met him in a bar down in Montmartre. Honestly, he kept on about this goal. The goal is the greatest. The goal is magnifique. And I couldn't make out what goal he were on about. Were it the European Cup? Were it the World Cup? Who scored it? Were it Georgie Best, Bobby Charlton? 
putting his arms on him. He was on about de gold. <laughs> you know, that tall chap with the funny hat. <laughs> He was a bit of a devil and all that to slap his yeah, hands once or twice. Carry on, mum's house. Here, I'm just going to pop this down here. Not them toilet rolls. Yeah, well, we slide out down its dock room. I don't have time to sort it out. Anyway, excuse me, Suit free stuff. Oh, yeah, bloody rabbits to you and all. Hey, hey, you'll be wearing a berry next and riding around on a bicycle selling onions. <laughs> oh, oh, this is a belter, look. <laughs> This is me doing a flamenco. <laughs> no, there were some Spanish students in the hotel and they dared me. So I said, all right, but I'll have to have a rose in my teeth, like Rita Hayworth, you know. So this one, he favoured that golfer, uh, Ballesteros. He chucked me this plastic rose. Tell <laughs> me what could I do? <laughs> Where's the boss tonight, then? In the back with a boyfriend, I reckon. She'll not last long, you know, Lynch. She's not playing the game she's playing. Getting rid of good grafters and putting these fancy dams on the payroll. He's on the payroll, is he? I wouldn't know, but I hope not. Hey, up. You're missing, lad, aren't you? You're missing my smouldering sex appeal and the little cosmopolitan touches. Well, exactly. I mean, who wants fish fingers when they've had caviar? <laughs> <laughs> Got your tickets booked, have you girls, for the Rover's swinging New Year Abel? Oh, are you kidding? Maybe see her spatched her bed. Reckon oh. she's not shifting. Oh. <laughs> I'd better be here, else Emily will never forgive me. She reckons her reputation as a hostess is in ruins anyway, after the Christmas Day disaster. Oh. Evening, ladies. Know the rules for tomorrow, I hope? Yes, I've already been warned. Yeah, and she's very upset, you know. I mean, no clog dancing in the book. Oh, you could do that down the cellar when I'm changing the bitter. Well, in this weather, I wouldn't go down there if Clint Eastwood were changing the bitter. Oh, I don't know, Elder. The Clint Eastwood, I might risk a few goosebumps. Mm. Well, let's hope yeah. he doesn't turn up, or else we'll all be catching our death. <laughs> if we weren't trampled flat in rough. <laughs> How about you, Glow? Have we got a date down there? I'd like to show you my Magnum special. Oh, you're working well, Frank. You really are. When it comes to persistence, you will, class. <laughs> Poor kid. I feel sorry for her. Don't say anything, but I think she fancies me. Which is a problem, because I like her. But with what I've got on my plate... Oh, I love me. How do you love I mean, it's a real problem. I can't bend down to pick up a crate without she's wiggling her toenails in my face. Big-headed devil. How do you wiggle your toenails, anyway? Well, have a skirt. Well, no, actually, I'm into trousers these days. <laughs> uh, hang on a sec, will you? All right. <coughs> Hello. I know you meant was a bringing a bird. It was just my razor sharp whip, wasn't it, eh? Um. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I might be. You see, um, it's a bit tricky. Um, look, mate, I've got a visitor. I've got to go. Um, but I'll tell you what, uh, expect me tomorrow. Okay? See you. Ciao. Sorry about the kale, Sonia. Uh, I'm a bit behind schedule. Oh, that's okay. I'm a bit early, aren't I? I didn't want to be hanging around, having spun my yarn, so to speak. Right, well, you sit yourself down, make yourself comfortable, I'll get some coffee in a minute. Now, listen, the point is, this party that we're going to take by storm, you see. Now, uh, Dolly, well, that's uh, this guy's sort of uh, life partner, right? Well, well uh, last year, she came in this pair of cufflinks, you see. Now, she'd play Elle if I turn up without her. I mean, I wouldn't be able to show my face, so... Well, I don't know. It looks like we'll have to call the trip off. Have you tried the chair back? Hmm? Oh, no, no. Uh, they wouldn't be down there. You see, I never wear them. Too how flashy. How about the vacuum cleaner? Things can get sucked up. No, no. No, I don't think so. Well, call the police, then. Missing cufflink department. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why not? we better still. Call me a cab. Hey. Call me a cab. I mean, I get the message. You've changed your mind. No. No, you see, it's these cufflinks. Oh, stuff the cufflinks. Now, hang on a minute. You said, sure, come to London. Fix it. Keep it hush-hush. Well, I have fixed it. And I have kept it hush-hush. I bombed out of that house yelling, blade and races. So stop being wet. If Dolly's fixed you up with another Dolly, then just tell me to get on my bike and let's forget this cufflinks routine. I don't believe this. And while we're yelling at each other, if I'm your girlfriend, then kiss me as though you mean it. Maybe you don't mean it. Maybe you'd rather play patter cake. It's, 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 it's just a... Well, I, I don't see you I as know a... what you don't see me as. It's what you do see me as that puzzles me. 
Right. Yeah. Point taken. Look. If I promise never to mention the word cufflinks again, will you come with me to London? Okay. That's a deal. Oh, still will you, wriggle bum. Come on. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello. Here's the bloke who reckoned he'd do a four o'clock flyer. Sorry, love. Got held up at the printer. Mm. Hello. Hello, beautiful. Spent the afternoon haggling. I can stand on one leg for ten minutes and seven seconds. I did it this afternoon. Well, you get the job then. Hat trick girl at the stork club. <laughs> it's his man. She's been dead, sly. Why? What's happened? She's gone off to Newcastle. Is that right? Oh, uh, yes, she's decided to spend the new year there. Oh, for heaven's sake, what gets into that kid? <laughs> you tell me. She burst in, got her glad rags together, and then it was off in a puff of smoke sort of style. Well, talk about unpredictable. I might not let her be my best friend after this. I suppose it's forgivable, really, when you think about it. You don't see it as thoughtless, then? Well, yes, I do, but maybe she just wants to be with people her own age. And let's face it, there aren't many of them round here. Curly Watts, Terry Duckworth. Not her type, Ken. No, from what we've seen, obviously not. But, I mean, anyway, what's the attraction up in Newcastle? Well, it's this lad called Tim, seemingly Ranger. Yeah, but I thought she wasn't keen on him. Well, I don't suppose he's the only fish in the sea. Ah, I reckon there's somebody else. One of these strong, silent Tynesiders. All set. All set. I was just thinking. You never did find those cufflinks, did you? <laughs> well, that was you being rude, wasn't it? Forgetting your manners. It's the tigress in me. <laughs> I know you've got claws. I'm a creature of impulses, you see. I do these mad things and then I go cold and think, oh, God, I've read it all wrong. Listen, don't knock mad impulses. I mean, where would life be without them? I love to ask my dad. Don't dash off, kid. Bet wants a word. Well, miss me, boss. No, tell the big chief. She gives the orders. She said it won't take a minute. What's so urgent? She's had a flipping night. Excuse me. Squeeze you. Certainly. Oh, Frank, come on, stop it. Behave. Do you remember that kiss at Christmas? God, I can still taste that. Can't you? Cut it out, Frank. Oh, come on. Own up. It had you weak at the knees. You won't be satisfied, will you? Till I've lost my job and... and my self-respect. <laughs> you won't miss them. I never have. You were a right louse, aren't you? <laughs> Listen. Let's stop playing games. We can crack it right now. And no aggravation. <laughs> With that next door, are you down? That was just a tale. She's in the bath. She'll be ours. Frank, stop it. I'm warning you. If you don't let me go, I'm going to start screaming. Now, wait a minute. You think I just work on a switch or something? You think you can just turn me on and off like a light? Now, you have been working on me. You gave me the come on. So, all right, now I'm hooked. You wrong, conceited, flaming what? liar. You wrong, oh. Don't you ever do that to me. Oh, you were being real bother. It's you that will be in bother. Oh, yeah. Just ask yourself who holds the cards round here. Who bet is going to believe, huh? All right. Okay. You don't want to play ball. All right. So here's two bits of advice. Keep your blouse buttoned and your mouth shut. the streets back on Monday and don't miss the omnibus on Sunday at three o'clock. Well, next on Plus, turn us off to the brewery in Emmerdale. Mm -hmm.